and drove it into his back, stabbing him repeatedly till he stopped moving. His carcass slumped halfway to the floor and stopped, held up by the TV still attached to his head. The skank on the floor between the beds was looking at me, trying to process what she'd seen through her druggy brain. I still had a couple little baggies of shit I'd scooped up off the table in my pocket. Her eyes lit up when I approached, holding the small pack of ice in front of her face the way you tease a dog with a treat. You want this shit? Yeah, just give it to me. My man's hogged enough for one day. Over on the other side, the fat man groaned, totally blasted. I'd say yes. It's all yours if you tell the camera who killed this fucker with his head in the screen. I pointed. It took her a moment to follow my hand. Who? Who? Who killed you, Joey? I let that shit sink in. Listening to her mumbling like a demented owl as I picked up the camera, took it out of its case and gave it a quick look. Everything seemed fine. It was old, still had a tape, but I knew how to use it. Now I just hoped the piece of shit I'd thrown through the TV wasn't so sloppy it was broke. This is a hit ordered by Fang, bitch. Say it. Fang, president of the Grizzlies Motorcycle Club, California. You tell him I left the fucking message with you right after I threatened to cut your throat. I came, I saw, I fucked him up for stealing from the club. Drugs, bitch. That ice you're hankering for. Understand? I used my best interrogator voice while I unscrewed the cap. Now repeat that back to me. Camera on. Fang did this. The Grizzlies. Bikers. Biker bastards. You, you threatened to cut me open. She sniffed, eyes more vacant than ever. This is for drugs. Drugs! Shit, where's mine? I let the camera pan around the room, focusing on the dead man. Sooner or later, some boys in blue would find this fucking mess, but my junkie witnesses would be long gone by then. They wouldn't know what the hell, because it wasn't meant for them. I had it all mapped out in my head. This was Plan B, a backup in case too many charters outside California sided with Fang. Once they saw this sloppy shit, he was one lame fucking duck. You killed him! You and your grizzlies! The junkie screamed, recognition flickering in her eyes. All over my sweet crystal! I teased her, giving the baggie in my free hand a shake. She slapped her fists on the ground, truly upset, rolling her head back and letting tears slide down her cheeks. Perfect. Switching the camera off, I stuffed it in its case and then threw the ice in her lap. Turning my head away from her for the last time was a fucking relief. I'd need a couple long, hard nights with Missy to forget those saggy, bruised tits. Snort up. Don't use it all in one night. I heard her laughing behind me as I stepped out and closed the door. By some small miracle, I'd barely gotten Lazy Eye's blood on me when I did him in. Just had his hunting knife with me, and it'd be getting cleaned up and dropped in the trash at the nearest remote place we found on our way to Devil's Territory. Missy got out of the driver's seat and slid over when she saw me coming. I got in the truck and felt her hand on mine. "'How's our girl doing?' I asked, looking across her at Jackie. "'Just fine. He didn't touch her. He never got the chance. He forced her downstairs with a knife. Came into our room when we were fucking sleeping.' Rage filled her voice. I nodded, taking the wheel and steering the truck onto the road. "'It's all over, babe. We got lucky this time.' "'No,' Missy snapped. "'You did this. You protected us both.' She squeezed my arm something fierce. "'God, Brass, we'd be dead or worse several times over if it wasn't for you.' "'You can't sell your sis short, babe. Jackie's strong, just like her big sis. I like hearing how awesome I am, just like anybody else, but fuck me if you're not holding your own. Both of you. And I need you to keep it up.' She leaned into me, resting her head on my shoulder. We'll try. Fuck yeah, you will, I growled, tapping the accelerator to catch some speed on the highway. You'll stay strong, because that's the way I like my woman. If I didn't think you could, I wouldn't have kept you as mine, even with that smoking hot bod. She smiled, leaned in, and kissed my arm. Over in the darkness, Jackie was glancing our way. I really felt bad for the kid. She'd been through so fucking much. Couldn't catch a break wherever we ended up. But that little glimmer in her eye said she approved. She understood. She was catching up to Missy, becoming a woman in her own right, forged in the fire no teen should have to face. And after we got to Montana, I was going to make sure she never had to again. The lazy-eyed fucker I'd killed and greedily recorded had gotten too damned close to wrecking everything. Anger pumped in my veins, and even having sweet Missy's skin on mine wouldn't calm it just now. There was no pulling back.
No letting my guard down, nothing but red-hot rage was going to serve me till I saw Fang's lifeless eyes and my girls finally had a place to settle the fuck down. They deserved a home, somewhere to rest without having to worry about who'd be at their throats the next day. God willing, I'd deliver home and a lot more. This shit between us, all three of us, went beyond convenience and love. They were part of me. They shared my suffering. For that, they'd soon be showered with everything I could give them. I'd run my crazy-ass ragged so they never had to suffer a damned thing every day they drew breath. My eyes burned when we got to Missoula, but I wasn't tired. No fucking way was I surrendering to the thing that nearly fucked me over till I was good and sure my work was done. When we got into town, I pulled into a rest stop, kept a close eye on the girls while I placed a call to Blackjack, let him know I'd be sending a copy of the video his way in the next day or two. Back in the truck, Missy was leaning on me a little more with every mile, staring into my eyes. You're sure we can trust these men, Brass? No. She looked at me like I'd lost my mind as soon as I said it. But I do know they don't hurt women and children. The devils are notorious for picking up strays and nursing them back to health. Just in case, I'm not taking any chances. She narrowed her pretty eyes, beaming more questions my way. I refused to answer till we were right at their gates. The grinning devil on the building behind their fence leered out, a full-blown mural with the guys and their infamous logo painted on it. The gate didn't open. A tall man with short, spiky hair walked up, and I instantly stifled a growl. It was Blaze, the bastard who'd married my sister. The giant named Tank and the shorter, leaner guy who served as his VP, Stinger, was coming up behind him. "'Stay here!' I heard my girl yell to her kid sis, joining me at the gate. Fuck, I didn't like her there, right in the open, but I wasn't gonna fight it. "'Hold up!' Blaze snapped, throwing up a hand. "'Wait here while we open up. Gonna have my sergeant-at-arms pat your asses down and make sure you're not fucking with us.' "'Nope!' Blaze's whole body twitched at my reply. I'll stand here. You can pat me down, and me only. Lay a hand on my old lady or her kid sister in the truck, and I'll turn this fucking thing right around and take my chances alone back in Redding. Blaze snorted, shaking his head. You gotta be shitting me. You're the fuck who's come to my doorstep begging, remember? My clubhouse, my rules. Stinger gave a stern nod. Behind him, Tank glowered, flexing his cannon-sized arms. The big fucker still wanted the blows he hadn't gotten back in Reno when the old ladies held him back from smashing me to mush. Missy reached over and smoothed her hands over my arm. Brass. One look at her soothed the anger, if only a notch. Fuck. If I was alone, I wouldn't have hesitated to stand here all day and argue with these fucks. But nothing was easy since my old lady and the kid came into my life. All right. You're an asshole, Blaze, but I know you're a reasonable man. I know Blackjack talked to you by now about safe harbor for my girls. You give me that up front, right now, and I'm yours. The fucking gorilla behind you doesn't even need to pat me down nicely. You know, unless he's into that. Tank grunted angrily, taking a step forward. Blaze spun, gave him the evil eye, and then turned back to me, clenching his fists on the iron bars. And you're a junky asshole I don't trust within an inch of my life, he growled. Too bad you're also my woman's only blood, or we wouldn't be having this talk right now. His eyes shifted to Missy. Nervous anger and uncertainty showed in her tight face, but she held his gaze. Blaze let out a long sigh and lowered his face for a second before bringing it back up. Fuck. Okay, here's how it's gonna go. The girls get out, stand off to the side, and I'll have Sting search the truck. If you're not hiding anything fucked up, you hand your chick the keys and she goes on her merry way straight to the hotel we've got arranged. Nowhere else. I'll keep two guys posted to make sure nobody unexpected shows up. I didn't like it, but I could live with those terms. I nodded. Tank! Blaze called his name, and he stepped forward, punching the code on their side. The gate slid open. Stinger marched out first, shooting me an uneasy look, heading for the truck. Missy ran ahead of him to collect Jackie. Goliath stood next to me like a statue. Knew the fucker was waiting to get through searching the vehicle before he had his fun. Stinger combed everything over thoroughly. Blaze made me grind my teeth in rage on the best day, but I had to admit the asshole sure knew how to pick his crew. He had more skilled, level-headed guys under him right now than Redding had seen for years, despite being a whole lot bigger. Sting's search was all over in a couple minutes, cold and efficient. It's clear, Prez. Nothing in there I wouldn't expect to see after a long road trip, the VP said, saluting with a huge smile. 
Okay, grab Moose and get your bikes to escort this fucking rust bucket home. He turned to me. Now's a damn good time to hand over the keys. You packing any heat? You hand it over right now. We locked eyes. I couldn't tell whether or not the fucker was enjoying this, but he was deadly insistent. Growling, I reached into my pocket while Tank eyeballed me, throwing my keys and wallet to Missy first. Go, baby. You'll both be fine. I'll get over there as soon as I can later, I said, pulling out my nine millimeter and passing it to Blaze. She gave me one last longing look and then took off. I watched her climb into the driver's seat, waiting for the prairie pussies. A couple bikes roared out through the half-open gate a second later, Stinger on one and a fat, bearded dude with an eye patch on the one behind him. The truck started up and followed the Harleys down the road. Soon as we were alone, the whole world shifted. Tank picked me up like a measly branch and slammed me into the brick wall next to the gate. My torso hit so fucking hard it sucked the wind out of my lungs. I grinned and tried to laugh, but nothing would come out. Grinning and bearing it was all I could do to avoid signing my death warrant, swinging around and throwing my fist into his thick jaw. His fat hands thumped hard down my back, then rounded my sides. When he got to my boot, I remembered I'd forgot to take out my blade. Shit! Hey, big guy, there's a— Tank practically tore my leg off. I hit the ground and he was still pulling on it, growling as he undid the strap with the holster. He held it up, drawing out the knife, smiling in the faint evening sun. Figured as much— Looks like it's just this knife, boss. Wouldn't have done us no harm. Blaze nodded, satisfied. He stared at me on the ground, stepping closer. Finally, he extended a hand. Shaking his hand like this brought the whole fucked-up reality home. I had to swallow all the bitter rivalry as he helped me up. I was used to venom and bullets from devils, but fucking handshakes? Come on. He gave me a rough shove as soon as I was on my feet. I'll give you a minute to say hello to your sis, and then you don't step one foot outside the meeting room till I say so. I nodded. There. That felt a lot more like the devils I knew, and I could relate to it a lot more than that alien nice guy shit. Jordan! Shelley came running toward me before I got two steps into the clubhouse. She was working at the bar, and she threw herself at me, practically bowling me over on the floor for the second time that day. I couldn't resist locking my arms around her. Hard to believe so much shit happened in just a couple months since the wedding. Hey, sis, it's brass here around these boys, I reminded her. She quirked an eyebrow. Oh, just like you're going to suck it up and call me Saffron? Damn. Hearing that fucking stripper name was always like a shot in the chest, but right now we had more important things. I hugged her one more time and then stepped back, nodding. Whatever you want to be called, it's damn good to see you again. We'll catch up later when business is done. We'll be the judge of that. Blaze growled, slamming a heavy hand on my shoulder. Let's go. You've said your piece. Shelley gave him a disapproving look. Blaze shrugged. Club business, baby. You know that. He paused, flashing my sis a knowing smile. Don't worry. We won't scratch a hair on his head unless he gives us a damn good reason to. All the boys are under orders not to. Even Tank. She nodded, relief shining in her face. Make sure you bring him back here when you're finished. We barely got to talk at the wedding. Great. More drama for later. Didn't have a fucking clue how to tell her I'd picked up an old lady who almost killed my ass at first, plus a little girl. Being marched into the large devil's meeting room with Blaze behind me was almost a relief. Everybody was there waiting for me, a bunch of guys I'd seen before, Sands, Stinger, and Moose. Blaze filed in behind me and pointed to a chair in the middle of the table. I sat, watching as he took his place. Typical prairie pussy bravado. The other guys looked like they'd suck his dick, all except Tank, who seemed like such a heavy bastard in his own right he didn't need to fawn over anybody. Still, there was something in their eyes I'd never seen with Fang. True respect. Brotherhood. They looked at their prez like a worthy leader, not a man they ran favors for on fear alone. "'All right, bros, let's get this shit started,' he said, picking up a small gavel at the head of the table and slamming it down. "'Church is in session, and we have a guest.' Never thought I'd see a motherfucking bear at this table. He shook his head. I snorted. The disbelief was mutual. It was surreal as shit being here, staring at the faces of these men and their devil emblems, everything I'd been trained to destroy. Seems there's a power struggle in the Grizzlies MC, Blaze continued. Worse than the shit we've been hearing about their brushfire war with the cartel. Fang's reached his limit, and that's pretty fucking serious news for our club, seeing as we've always been on edge since Throttle sealed the truce with the bears. 
the two national presidents putting blood aside seemed like eons ago, right here in Montana, no less. But it was really less than a year and a half ago, back when easy pussy and pushing sweet fire in my veins was all I had to worry about. Fang's a fucking idiot, I growled, traitor to his own club. A tall, muscular dude around my own age snickered several chairs over. Blaze shot him an angry look. The devil froze, pivoting his lip ring on his mouth. Shut the fuck up, Roller. I'm not going to disrespect this asshole's colors as long as he doesn't shit on ours. Blaze looked at Tank next to him and then at me. Now, Brass, you going to tell us why the fuck Blackjack sent you racing up to our territory? I told them everything. How the fucked up war with the cartel weakened the whole club, fanning tensions that were simmering for years. Told them how they'd tried to kill me, how I shredded that psycho's face who'd tried to kill my girl, how Blackjack believed the club could turn itself around if it just burned away the cancer at the top. When I was finished, Blaze leaned back in his chair, his jaw clenched thoughtfully. He turned to Tank. What do you think? It's a real sad story, boss, Tank said, not something I ever expected to hear from the giant. But having this boy here is a real load of bullshit. There. That's more like the prairie pussy badass wannabe I know. I looked at Goliath and grinned. Blaze folded his hands and leaned forward, all his attention on me again. I'm inclined to agree. Look, Brass, we appreciate you giving us a heads up about this shit, mostly so we can stay the fuck out of it. What were you hoping to do with this little knock and talk? Fuck. Typical selfish prairie pussy bastard. I balled fists underneath the table, trying not to let the anger in my eyes flood everything. Blackjack and I are trying to save both our asses. Can't you fucking see that? I know this club's been through the grinder ever since you started this charter blaze. The last thing you want to do is strap on your knee-highs and go wading through our cesspool. Damn straight, Blaze said with a smile. And you're a fucking idiot if you let the past blind you to what's coming. Blaze's smile melted. Tank rose, slow and angry, ready to choke the life out of me for insulting his prez in their own clubhouse. Wait, wait. Blaze said, putting up his arm over Tank. Let's give him one chance to qualify that before we shut his ass up for saying such stupid shit. This shit will spill over into your club, Blaze. What I didn't get a chance to tell you is Fang thought I was a rat for the devils, not the cartel. Fuck, Tank growled, settling back into his chair. I know. We had a major shipment fucked up in Washington last week. He doesn't believe the Mexicans would slip so far north and hit us past Redding. Didn't take him long to draw a target on the devils, thinking you'd double-crossed us while we've been busy. Bastard! Blaze's fists hit the table. If that dumb motherfucker wants a war in his northern flank, we'll give him one. We'll ride through Sacramento with his fucking head on our bikes before the Mexicans can get to it. The devil's prez was shaking. Hot-headed as usual, but for once, I didn't blame him for having such a short fuse. Dunno, boss, Tank said, eyeing me warily. There's only eight of us, maybe double if we put in a call for reinforcements from the Dakota boys. That's enough to take Redding with Brass and his splinter group, but it's not shit if we gotta battle dudes from every other Grizzlies charter, too. Blaze shook his head. I hate to say it, but you're fucking right. Having this club on your side isn't gonna mop up every charter from Coeur d'Alene to San Diego. Besides, it sounds like the cartel's got your man on the ropes. Maybe we'd be better off here, beefing up our defenses, waiting for your evil empire to fall. I laughed. He really didn't see the full picture, and it was like talking to the goddamned wall trying to pry his eyes open. Don't give up. This is the end of the line. One more try or settling down with Missy is going to be the least of your worries. I couldn't ignore the persistent voice in the back of my mind. I tried to stay calm as I looked at Blaze and stood, hands on the table, not even looking past him when Tank got up and began sizing me up. You're totally fucking wrong, Blaze. I wouldn't come here asking you for favors without holding an ace. This time I looked at Tank, the fiercest skeptic in the room. He botched a hit a couple weeks ago. Some druggie with an old personal vendetta. When the fucker wouldn't pay up, he sent his boys after the guy. Ended up with a dagger in his back. Who the fuck cares? Tank growled. Give us something we can chew on or shut the fuck up, bear. I grinned. Fang doesn't take trophies like devils do. He likes to see it all go down on video. Some guys recorded the crime scene. Even got some junky bitch holed up in the room to squawk about what happened on film. Go ahead and fucking guess who's brought the tape to Big Sky Country. Silence. Tank and the younger guys eyeballed me like they wanted to drag my ass out back and put a bullet through my head. Blaze drummed his fingers on the table, angrily digesting the bitter pill I'd just forced down his throat. 
He knew damn well how restless other club prezes got when shit started to fall apart. One more bombshell that made the head honcho a target for the feds was one straw too many, one last kick that would bring the whole rotten structure down. He didn't need to know I'd killed the fuck myself and bribed the junkie to spill what I told her. He didn't need to know the twisted bastard was just a convenient kill I'd made for Jackie, warping the murder into a weapon against Fang. I swore I'd bring his ass down. Any white lie, any kill, any fucked-up stroke of luck was on the table. Only trouble is, Blaze still didn't look convinced. Shit, I had to head him off before he could open his angry mouth and breathe selfish fear back into all his guys. Look, I get it. Calling in your support means a battle, even if there's hardly anyone left standing by Fang's side. But it's a battle that must be fought. This shit doesn't end any other way, not even if Fang ends up with his neck on some Mexican's machete. It's not over till my club's removed its cancer and starts to heal. Don't you see it? If the Grizzlies fall apart, guess who's next in line for the cartel? I gave him a chance to answer. He didn't. Those boys from south of the border don't fight like MCs. There's no code, no club charter holding them back, no mercy. It's all about green to them. Green money and red blood. I rubbed my fingers together. My club has a lot of fucking problems. I'm not blind to that. But we didn't fall apart overnight, either. We were kicking your asses, barely raising a finger, back before the cartel started bombing, shooting, and raping everything in sight. They're taking the Grizzlies down, piece by piece, and we're a hell of a lot bigger than your club. What the fuck do you think they're going to do when we're dead and buried? When there's nobody left to fight them tooth and nail between Mexico and Montana? Blaze opened his mouth to give me more hell, but nothing came out. He closed it, his lips twitching angrily, drumming his fingers on the table. This is the kind of shit that needs to go up for a vote, he said quietly. You're not a voting member, Brass. Kindly get the fuck out. I need all the brothers here so we can make our decision. You mean I'm free to walk? Wherever you won't trip on our club, he looked past me. Let's recess, bros. I'll tell Sting and Moose to bring this fucker's girls back around. They can hang out in the bar with him while we make our decision. Blaze looked at me, and I nodded, exiting the room before his gavel clapped the wood. I headed for the bar to see my sis, wondering if it was really possible we'd just come to some kind of fucked-up understanding. Missy ran to me when they got in. Jackie followed cautiously behind her, taking a seat at the bar. I dropped the strongman act in my rival's lair just long enough to grab my girl's ass and press her to me. Fuck, her lips tasted good. There'd been too much drama and too much Jackie around to fuck her like I wanted. Christ, after this vote, I needed to get in her again. Every second my cock wasn't buried in her pussy was a shitty one. Did they treat you right? I asked, shifting my eyes on the two-man escort strolling toward the meeting room. They were great, Jackie chimed in before her big sis could answer. Yeah, Missy smiled. Jackie got a kick out of Moose talking like a pirate. He's the one with the eye patch, I finished for her. I know. I hadn't heard how their treasurer even lost his fucking eye, but it must have been recent. Still, hearing the good news put me a little bit at ease. The prairie pussies were assholes, but I wasn't worried they'd steal my women and cut their throats. It was nice to relax, if only a little bit. "'Who's this?' Saffron said, heading for the table with a pitcher of beer like I asked. Missy looked at my sister, and I had a weird flashback to me and Blaze sizing each other up. My girl spoke first, studying Shelley's old lady jacket. It had a big, Property of Blaze on the back, standard for claimed women in most clubs. "'I'm Missy Thomas, and this is my sister Jackie. I'm Brass's old lady, and proud of it.' She stuck out a hand. "'Brass? Holy shit!' Shelley looked at me for a long time before I finally took the pitcher out of her hands, and she took my girl's palm, giving it a shake. Jackie laughed. Fuck. Wasn't sure what was worse, waiting to see if the devils behind the wall voted to save our asses, or trying to explain to my little sis that I finally had something in my life worth living for. 9. Hard on the Line Missy I had to look close at Shelley Reagan to see the family resemblance. Her eyes were much brighter, and she didn't have that darkness swirling around her like brass, the same sweet intensity I wanted to tame. As soon as I said I was his old lady, there was a minute of stunned silence. Then the woman laughed, threw herself at me, and tucked her arms around me in a big, brutal, almost possessive hug. Okay, maybe they had something in common after all. Damn it, Jordan! Brass! Shelley, Saffron, pulled away and stuck her tongue out. 
You blather on about being away and all this club intrigue, but don't even tell your own sis you finally found a girl? I watched her do something I thought I'd never see. Saffron reached up and shoved her fingers through his short, dark hair, the hair that felt amazing underneath my fingertips. Of course, Brass didn't wait more than a second before he pulled away, something he never would have done with me. Whatever, he grunted. You know there's been some serious shit going on. My mind's been in strange places. We shared a look. The stern mask on his face broke in a thin smile, and then he grabbed my hand and clutched it to his chest. You heard the lady right, sis. This is my old lady, and that's never going to change no matter what your hubby decides in there. He gestured his head toward the closed meeting room. I'm going to fuck up the men who've wrecked my club one way or another. Then I'm going to give these two everything they seriously deserve. The hair-ruffling fingers must have been infectious. He leaned past me, tossing Jackie's hair, much to my little sister's surprise. And where are you staying here in Missoula? Saffron asked, giving me a good look. The bison? The guys said it'd be the safest place. She wrinkled her nose. Come on, we can do better than that. I'll talk to Blaze and see if you can stay at the new lake house we're renting. Lake house? Brass raised an eyebrow. Fuck me sideways, sis. You really come a long way in the world after growing up in shitty apartments. Whatever. Long as fucking Blaze is treating you right. She smiled. He is. And you've come a long way, too. I was about to grab his arm, press it between my breasts, a desperate little preview of all the ways I wanted to show him just how far he'd come. But the door to the meeting room swung open, and all the angry-looking devils came filing out. Their president, Blaze, marched toward us like he was running on rocket fuel. Brass instantly tensed up, stepping out of my grasp. Saffron backed up toward the table, and I took a seat with Jackie, trying not to eavesdrop on the serious business unfolding behind me. Well, good luck doing that. The men were right in front of me, and they looked like dynamite about to explode. Well, what's the word? Brass asked. It's an eye. Unanimous. You're a sorry bastard, but you're fucking right. My boys and I can't risk watching the Grizzlies fall apart or become a damned front for the cartel to creep north. We'll help your asses out. On our terms. The thick tension melted. I turned. Even as Saffron looked at me like I was nuts, she looked away, clearly marking the hard border she'd chosen to create between club business and family. Brass and Blaze shook hands like two long bartering merchants finally making a deal. There was no smiling, none of the manly pats on the back I'd seen among brothers. It was a wartime alliance, a marriage of convenience, plain and simple. Nothing more. I'll have my guys bring that fucking video by and get it copied. We'll have it out to every Grizzlies charter as soon as Throttle gives the okay from Dakota. Blaze said, Better to head off the reinforcements to Redding, before we've got to fight em. Hope you're right about this shit making the other charters flip on Fang. I am. You read my mind, Blaze. They shared a grunt, and then Blaze stepped up, grabbing Saffron and lifting her by the hand. Come on, baby. Let's get his sidekick some grub before they head to their rooms for the night. Oh, no, Saffron said, standing and shaking her head. I'm not putting my own brother and his old lady up in that crappy lodge— it's a bad place for a little girl, too. Blaze's eyes bugged out. What the fuck are you saying, woman? You want to bring, um... The lake house? I knew you'd throw a fit if I said home, so I'm picking the next best thing. Seeing as we're not using it in the off-season... Jesus Christ. Blaze pushed a hand through his spiky hair, going red in the face, as if he was trying to hold in a hurricane. Fuck. All right. He turned to Brass. You're welcome to stay at our favorite vacation spot. Might be safer anyway if any of the fucks from your club come milling around. Just don't. I know how to behave myself, brother-in-law. I'll be a good boy. You don't need to worry about the girls, neither. These ladies are always on their best behavior. I wouldn't dream of doing anything that would fuck up the new thing we've got here. They shared an icy stare. Finally, Blaze shook his head, growling as he threw up his arms and headed for the bar. Shit, 
Saffron gave Brass an apologetic look and ran after him. Let's get some fucking food, and then I want them out of my damned sight. There'll be time to play catch up with your bro and his chick, after the heavy shit's over. I could practically hear her rolling her eyes. Jesus, Blaze. Look, I know it'll be a late night for you, so I'll stay over with them and make sure nothing crazy happens. Brass looked at me and let out a laugh. I joined him. I wasn't sure how much Jackie followed what was going on, but she must have absorbed something. By the time Saffron returned holding some boxed-up dinner for us, my sister was laughing harder than she had in months. The cabin was beautiful. We ate an early dinner with Saffron and made small talk. Jackie and I weren't the only ones who had our stomachs twisted in knots any time someone mentioned family. It was obvious Brass and his sister had suffered, too. I knew they'd lost their mother to some other grizzlies' killers he'd fallen in with. But the way their eyes fell at the only mention of their mom all evening was all too familiar. That evening, Saffron turned in early, helping set up a comfy room for Jackie downstairs. Brass and I sat on the porch, feeling the crisp bite of early spring on our faces. He stared out at the darkening lake's waters and the high ridges leading toward Glacier National Park beyond them. Damn, just seeing it makes me want to go hiking, you know? Speaking above a whisper felt like screaming in the nighttime stillness. Brass laid a hand over my shoulder, pulled me close, dangerously close to his lap. Didn't take you for the kind of girl who enjoys getting down and dirty in the woods. That park's got some nasty fucking bears, too. Shelley and I used to head up there all the time, till Ma couldn't make the trips any more. I laughed. I've dealt with more grizzlies than I ever thought I would. What's a few more? Some of them are really fucking nice when you get past all the teeth and claws. My hand slipped into his. I clenched my fingers tight around his. He closed his eyes and puffed dragon smoke into the cool air. Fuck, babe. You really want to play with bears? His eyes sparkled, drawing me in like they always did. I nodded. Wrong answer. In a flash, his hands were on me, lifting me high and plopping me down on his lap. I felt the raging hard on beneath his jeans instantly. Everything below my waist tingled, and the wetness was instant with my legs spread over his waist, splayed wide for the cool breeze, and so much more. Brass, I whispered. Your sister's not even asleep yet. She's still banging around in the kitchen. Just past the screen door, a pot clanged, putting a big fat exclamation mark on what I'd said. I don't give a shit. Not till you choose the words coming out of those sweet fucking lips more carefully, babe. You want to play with bears? He pushed his forehead against mine. It was warm, pleasant. Fuck that shit. You better tell me there's only one bear you spread those killer lakes for. I'm not the sharing kind of guy. Instinct tells me to rip another dude's dick off if he even looks at what's mine. You know that? I shuddered. My tongue flicked against my lips, mischievous as the thoughts and desires soaring through my flesh. I wanted him, ached to my core for him, yearned in a way I hadn't known. Yeah, I whispered. What else does instinct tell you to do? His hand spread wider on my ass and then clenched it. His fingers dug in, hard enough to make me wriggle against him, pushing my clit over his dick through our jeans. Holy shit. He was so fucking hard, rough and eager as Diamond. Except Diamond didn't feel so warm and smooth, and it sure wouldn't feel as good as him inside me. Despite all the chaos, I'd remembered my pill. My pussy tingled, swelled, and ached a little more when I thought about pulling him up inside me without a condom. Deep, bare, ready to surrender everything that was quintessentially his. Fuck it. I couldn't be a good girl anymore. Not when he was so close. How was I seriously supposed to resist this? His hips ground against mine, pulling me closer, and resistance wasn't even on the radar when his lips found mine. His tongue twined with mine and formed slippery, hypnotic, wonderful circles. I moaned into his mouth. It only encouraged him. 
Brass grabbed my bottom lip with his teeth, sucking it deep into his mouth, flicking his thick, strong tongue over both our lips again and again. It was his trademark, a salacious preview of what was to come. I reached between my legs and put my hand on a stick. He grunted. Smiling into the next kiss, I pushed my way around him harder, breath hitching when my clit pressed perfectly on his hardness through the denim. Jesus, to hell with that denim. I wanted him to grab my waist and rip the jeans off right fucking now. Brass! The screen door popped open and banged in its frame. Mortified, I looked up at Saffron. Brass broke our latest kiss and shot his sister a look that could have cooled the sun. The brunette threw one hand over her mouth and barely stifled the humiliating laughter just in time. Well, I was going to ask if you two wanted some dessert, but it looks like you've beat me to the punch. Red-hot blood filled my cheeks. I tried to look away, fighting to wriggle my way off him, but he wouldn't let go. His fingers stayed tight around my ass. Painful reminders of sheer sex stopped in its tracks. Go back inside, sis. We'll be in after a little while. Anger flowed through his voice, not a shred of shame. And yeah, keep something warm for us. Let me guess, it's that patented brownie a la mode stuff, right? Saffron looked right at me and gave a curt nod. Oh, God, I thought I'd be sick right then and there, all my redness turning green now that my shame was complete. I'll keep it ready for you two. One more wickedly knowing smile, and she went back inside. I slapped his chest so hard I heard the thud. Let go of me. You fucking kidding, babe? He growled, tightening his grip until I couldn't move. We haven't fucked for days. Shelly makes a mean fucking treat in her kitchen, but I'd give up ever tasting it again for one more taste of you. Right here, right now. But Jackie's waiting for us. I moaned, desperate to extinguish the guilty fire roaring inside me. She can wait a few more minutes. She's probably stuffing her face with brownie and loving it. Come on, down by the lake. His eyes narrowed. Don't bullshit me, baby girl. I know you want this as bad as I do. Things are about to get a lot more fucked up before they get better. We gotta take advantage of these times together. You know? I nodded wondering where he was going. He rocked his rock-hard erection into me, raising his hips high enough to lift my whole body, and then I couldn't wonder about anything at all. I came undone. His dick made me want to jerk and moan like a madwoman, igniting a temporary insanity any courtroom would have approved. Warm, hot breath poured into my ear. His stubble raked my neck, prickly and masculine. Sexy as hell? Oh, yeah. Damn. There was that heat again, thawing the glacial shame in my veins, becoming the filthiest kind of lust. I'm making sure Fang and his psychos are dead one way or another. Don't know if I'll walk out alive when the big showdown comes. He kissed my neck, right in the middle, giving me a shudder that silenced all the worries his words wanted to stir. Only one thing's clear. I'm not leaving this fucking planet without having you as much as I can. I don't care if I die tomorrow with lead in my chest, or in my sleep when I'm a decrepit old bastard. We're fucking, babe, fucking on demand, fucking day and night, fucking to remind you you're my old lady, and you're never gonna get claimed half as hard as when I'm between your legs, filling your pussy, no matter what the fuck happens from here. Come on live and learn. Let's fuck. By the time he whispered those last two words, I was a shaking, sweating, sopping wet mess in his hands. My hips were moving on their own, shifting against him again and again, every nerve screaming to be fucked, while my stupid head tried to say no. He wasn't hearing anything without me underneath him anymore. It took me a minute to realize he'd picked me up, and we were heading toward the thick trees near the lake. He carried me in his arms through the cool evening air, into the wilder darkness. It got a lot cooler when he laid me out on a big flat boulder near the water. It was a perfect height for him to stand between my legs and grind while he sucked and kissed at my throat, 
like the earth decided to put it there thousands of years ago, just for us. This is crazy, I thought, shaking my head. Absolutely fucking crazy. No, crazy was his tongue, sliding down my shoulder as he pulled at my shirt. He was already tearing at my bra strap by the time it was over my head. My breasts popped out into the cool night air, and my right nipple slid into his mouth. The temperature couldn't have been much higher than the fifties, but I was burning up each time his tongue circled, bowing and dipping, hungrily lapping at my flesh. My nipples softened in his mouth. God, my hips were still rocking, bucking up and down on any part of him they could find. Brass. I reached for his head and scratched through his hair until he looked up. I need you inside me. Please. He looked at me like I'd just granted his deepest, dirtiest wish. Maybe I had. All I knew was I'd never seen anyone undress so fast. His cut shirt, jeans, and boxers came off one after another, piling on the ground beneath us. His dark tattoos glistened beneath the moonlight, and it looked like the ferocious bear snarling on his chest was doing an angry dance when he moved for my bottoms. Pick your sweet ass up, babe. These are coming right the fuck off. He wasn't kidding. The instant my butt was up, the jeans were gone, and he tore away my panties in a fistful. Oh, God, I whispered to the moon and the stars, a prayer, all I could do to keep sane in the dark calm before he fucked me deep, skin on skin for the first time. Coolness bathed the drenched ache between my legs. My heartbeat echoed in every extremity, beating its want into my brain. The thud crashed harder inside me when he slid his cock against my folds, and I thought I'd pass out. You got any fucking clue how bad I've wanted this? How long I've been waiting to feel you like this? He rocked his hips. My pussy coated his dick in cream, and he smeared it toward my clit. My slit couldn't have been hotter, tighter, wetter. Just fuck me, I whimpered. A plea in my voice caught me by surprise, but it was honest. I needed this. I needed him inside me. Now. My legs curled around his hips and pinched tight. Brass let out a long growl like a mountain lion zeroing in on something irresistible. Just fuck you, missy? You mean like this? He shifted his hips and then slammed forward, steadily pushing his swollen cock into me. Yes. It was the sweetest shock of my life. Having him inside me with rubber between us was nothing, nothing compared to this. My hands scratched at the stone beneath us, too used to having sheets to claw at. Here, there was nothing between us and nature, nothing between our blood and skin. Fuck. His muscular body shook when he reached prime depth, unable to go an inch more. He filled me completely. Fuck. Babe, if you were any fucking tighter, we wouldn't even fit. I pushed against him, hard, clenching my teeth. The pleasure was almost painful, because there was so much of it, flowing like lava through every nerve. My brain struggled to process everything. That'd be a real, a real shame. It was hard to talk. Brass grunted, pulling back and slamming himself into me, harder this time. I moaned. More current raced through my skin. My ankles burned, just holding on to him. No way. He wasn't going to do this. I wasn't in the mood for a slow, sweet loving. I started to buck, panting hot desire through my teeth, adding my feminine growl to his. Fuck me. The message must have reached him through his dick because my lips wouldn't work after three more strokes. Nothing but screams came out. He was like a masculine mountain plowing into me, all muscle, all need, all conquest. I threw my head back and pumped my hips, desperate to keep pace. Come, babe. Come and scream as loud as you want. Nobody's gonna hear it but me. Like I could do anything else. He quickened his thrusts, filling me harder and faster, relentlessly forcing me over the edge until I exploded. Pleasure gurgled through me and cut off my breath. I couldn't feel anything except the raw heat of my pussy, clenching his cock, 
gushing on his skin, tightening while he drove into me. My head snapped back and I let it all out. I screamed through the orgasm. I wasn't so sure about nobody else hearing us, but I didn't fucking care. My brain and body were total slaves to the ecstasy he created, the claiming fire roasting me within every time he slammed deep. He fucked me straight through it and still kept going. I pushed my way up, keeping my legs wide for him, throwing my hands around his neck. The first climax took a lot out of me. I needed every limb to hold myself to him now, even as my fingers and ankles dug tighter to his skin. He fucked like an animal, a runaway train powering through my legs, grunting for breath and cursing in my ear when he leaned in to sniff my hair. I'm gonna fucking bust, babe. You want it inside you, yeah? I nodded and whimpered. Thinking about him flooding my pussy with his molten heat sent me hurling toward a fresh orgasm. I tried not to scratch his neck raw, but it was really hard not to. I couldn't deny it. I was losing my mind in this sex, losing it to him the same he'd already taken my heart. Do it, Brass. I love you. Good. Wouldn't dream of wasting this cum anywhere else. Love you, babe. Come with me. Wanna feel you milk my balls dry. His breath hitched. Come on. Fuck. He crashed against me, burying himself to the hilt. His hips thrashed against my skin, even when he was all the way in, kindling a wicked heat on my clit with his pubic bone. I shot straight to heaven, and then I went somewhere higher when I felt his teeth on my neck. He bit me right there, marking me with one hell of a hickey. His erection swelled inside me and exploded. The heat was intense, a firestorm all over, burning away everything except the feeling of my pussy being filled with fire. He pulsed again and again, pumping magma jets deep in my womb. My pussy clenched so tight I screamed, desperately sucking at his cock, knowing what I wanted. I was thankful I'd never let any other man come inside me. This was all his, and God willing, we'd never use condoms again. I came like a madwoman enjoying her strongest hit, and crashed back to earth knowing I'd never settle for anything less. I was addicted to every inch of him, from the tattooed back I'd just scratched to pieces, down to the hard perfection still emptying itself inside me. He came hard, long. After an eternity, his body shuddered and he released me, gently settling my sore hips on the rock. My turn to collapse. Brass held me, stroking my hair. We enjoyed the sudden quiet, the beautiful coolness with nothing except our lungs catching mountain air. My sis did pretty fucking well. I gotta give her props. This place isn't half bad, he mused. Yeah, a girl could really settle down here if she wanted. It's so beautiful. It was strange sitting up buck naked and staring at the dark hills beyond the lake, but I meant every word. It certainly went beyond the landscape. Everything tonight was beautiful. A starry mountain heaven in the eye of hell. Do you think we'll be able to stay in Reading if everything goes right? I asked, straightening my hair with my fingers. He nodded. That's home as far as we're concerned. This place is devil's territory. I sure as shit don't belong here. But if I can save my club, maybe coming to prairie pussy land with my colors for a visit will be as easy as driving over the state line. You know what else I think? Hmm? He reached down and grabbed my clothes, throwing them onto my lap. Our sisters are gonna have all that sweet shit eaten if we don't hurry our asses up. I laughed. We dressed quickly. Just in time, too, because the cold was starting to make my nipples hard again in a way that wasn't so sexy. Dessert? Really? You're still hung up on that? I stepped into his embrace, running my hand over his jaw stubble. I'm hung up on making sure you get the sugar rush you need for tonight. He grinned. Soon as everybody's asleep, I'm fucking your brains out till dawn, babe. Being my old lady's a full-time job, so it's taking this dick. Get used to it. He playfully swatted my ass. I jumped and let him lead me back up the path through the trees, toward the cozy cabin with the glowing lights. Good thing I've always been a night owl. 
I said, already wondering how I'd have to gag myself to stay quiet while he ravished me. The next few days were beautiful. Mountain walks, good comfort food made by saffron, and nights I'd never forget. Brass had to take off every day and take care of business with the devils, but he always came back before nightfall. Even Jackie seemed a lot more relaxed breathing the magic Masula air. Up here the wolves lost our scent. They couldn't follow. Or so I told myself. But if we ever wanted to go home or feel safe again, it all came down to Brass and his new partners, removing the cancer at the top. I tried to be supportive. It wasn't hard when he came to me every night like a storm, flocking me with his hands clapped over my mouth, leaving me to scream and bite and thrash when I came on his cock. Coming this hard obliterated all the worries. Granted, I should have paid more attention to them, but it was such a relief here. Until we came north, I'd forgotten what it felt like to be truly safe. Heaven never lasts forever, especially when it's lodged in hell's cyclone. I was laying next to him late one evening, my head resting on his powerful chest. We'd just gotten through another round, leaving us both blissfully drained and sweaty, exposed to the cool peace that always settled after sex with this man. I'd gotten to scream my lungs out tonight. Saffron took Jackie into town for some ice cream, and also to take a look at the local high school, in case we were forced to stay here a lot longer than we intended. Having the place to ourselves should have been perfect. It certainly started out that way. Then his phone chirped on the floor, still tucked in his jeans, a jarring ring intruding on our post-fuck serenity. Brass groaned, gently pushed me off, and reached down. I saw his face tighten when he flicked the screen on. Yeah, we got a serious fucking problem, son. I overheard Black Jack's gravelly voice on the other line. The first copies of that tape just hit the other charters today. The mole we've still got in the clubhouse says Fang's mad as hell. He's swearing up and down he didn't kill the guy, promising the other clubs he's gonna get a confession out of whoever did. Brass gave me a dark look and pulled the phone away from me, hoping I wouldn't hear. He got up and stepped into the hall. I strained to listen. Yeah? What fucking leverage has he got? Sounds like the damn thing did exactly what we hoped for. I couldn't hear what Blackjack said. I reached for the heap of my clothes on the ground, pulling on my panties and a long t-shirt. I stepped up to the doorframe and waited, hoping he wouldn't notice I was right behind him. Okay, whatever, Brass said. Send it my way. Better I see this shit for myself. There was a long pause. The call ended. Then his phone dinged again, and he tapped the screen to bring up a video. The short redhead on his screen was beaten bloody. Her eyes were swollen shut, and she jumped each time the demon's hands moved behind her, his fingers flexing rough on her shoulders before he leaned down and showed his monstrous face. It can't be. Jesus. No. My face wanted to fall to the ground, but my eyes were glued to the sideshow on Brass's phone. I knew her. It was Jackie's tutor, Krista, and she'd been left behind while we fought our way out. You fucking rats are too cowardly to fight man to man, face to face, Fang rumbled through the glowing glass. Now you see what happens. He bared his teeth in a sick, angry smile. I'm gonna give you seventy-two hours to show yourselves at the clubhouse— and bring every copy of that bullshit you sent far and wide. You'll admit that fucking abortion was a forgery on tape, and then we'll see what happens. I'm done making any promises about anyone's safety, except hers. His fingers tightened on the woman's shoulders. This bitch dies piece by fucking piece if you don't show yourselves. I know the prairie pussies are in on this. They're gonna get the first hand I lop off in the mail. Assuming I don't start with these pretty tits first. He grabbed her breasts and squeezed. Hard, painful. Krista jerked in his arms, but she was too bad off to fight. He'd broken her resistance a while ago. Maybe days. Tears burned my eyes. My heart crashed against my ribs like a hummingbird trying to beat its way out of my chest. Seventy-two hours, assholes. Till I carve my first piece— then it'll be every fucking hour you cocksuckers don't show. Not a minute more. Don't disappoint me. 
I didn't claw my way to the top of this goddamned club passing out mercy. Looks like some people have forgotten that lately, and they're about to find out I'll do everything in my power to hang on to what's mine. Don't underestimate anything. The screen went dead. Brass's arms trembled, and for a second I thought he was going to hurl the phone down the staircase next to him, smash it into a million pieces, the same way my heart was splitting apart. I couldn't hold in the anguished squeal. He spun, tucking the cell back into his pocket. He was on me in an instant, had me pressed snug against the wall. Jesus, Brass, if only I'd known. I didn't know he had her. Thought they just knocked her out when they got Jackie. I thought they left her there. We can't let him do. Babe, I need you to get a grip right fucking now. If you have a stroke or a heart attack right here over this, there's no way I'm going to be able to get her out. I'll be too busy saving your sweet ass to deal with hers. I wanted to wipe away the hot tears sliding down my cheeks, but Brass's big arms blocked the way. Can you? I shot him a skeptical look, and it hurt to doubt him. I mean, can you save her without killing or hurting yourself or any of your guys? His lips twitched. Yes. Have some faith, babe. There's no fucking way I'm gonna let him spill more innocent blood. Not when it's all for clinging to power and fucking up my club. His fingers tightened on my arm. Hard. I let out a whimper. Shit, I'm sorry. He ripped himself away and stepped back. Go back to bed, missy. I gotta grab my clothes and go. Blaze and his crew need to be in on this. They'll help me figure out the logistics. I slumped against the wall. My knees wouldn't work, and I kept sliding down, down, toppled by a dark gravity, slowly losing my mind. The terrible fog that chewed at my brain while I was bound, watching serial menace Jackie, returned. I shook my head, fighting it. Brass gave me a look on his way out like he wanted so bad to stay, to help me up. But he was right, viciously right. I couldn't hold him back. Every second he spent dealing with me was one more second of this poor woman's life melting away, bringing her closer to the gruesome end. Everything the demented bastard promised. I listened to my man's boots thud down the stairs, and then he was out the door. His truck started a second later, and he gunned it, pulling out of the rocky driveway. It was like taking a huge splash of glacial water in the face. Or maybe it was pure acid. I barely knew Krista, but she was innocent. Irony surfaced, raking her cruel nails across my face. Jesus, Dad's desperate mistakes had gotten us dragged into all this, and I'd dragged Jackie in because I'd been too stupid to throw the cash away and run for the hills. Now my blackness had spread, eating someone else alive. If it wasn't for Dad's sins, we'd have never gotten ourselves captured— I'd never dragged in brass and sunken deeper than anything I imagined. My sister wouldn't have needed a tutor, and the girl wouldn't have wound up stuck in this insane biker war. My temples throbbed. It was hard to stand up, but I managed. I dressed quickly, listening as a vehicle growled into the driveway. I tensed up, thinking maybe it was brass, but Jackie and Saffron's laughter at some joke as they came through the door told me otherwise— They'd gotten home just in time. I washed my face in the bathroom across the hall. Must have waited in the darkness for a good half hour before anyone came up to check on me. Missy? I've got some chili going downstairs if you're ready to eat. Saffron paused. Where the hell's my brother? I got up and walked toward her, refusing to turn on the light. I couldn't let her see the crazy turmoil scrawled on my face. I need to borrow your car. Huh? We just got back. But I guess if there's something you need in town, I'd be happy to drive you. No. It came out like a bullet. Sharp. Forceful. I need to borrow it. There's shit going on with the club. With brass. I promise I'll get it back to you in one piece. Help me. I sounded like a lunatic. Damn. What well, was one more lie on top of everything else I'd told myself to stay sane during all this? Lady. You'd better take a big, deep breath and tell me what the fuck is going on before I call up Blaze and find out. It was the first time I'd heard her angry, 
and she definitely had the fire in her voice that told me she'd been through some crap. Still, it didn't soften me one bit. If I say anything else, you won't even think about handing me the keys. Look, I'm going to find myself a ride one way or another, but I'd prefer to have something reliable to get me where I'm going, preferably a loner from somebody I can trust to keep their mouth shut. Saffron reached for my hand, and I spun her around. We were both about the same size, but I was way more worked up. She hit the bed with a muffled yelp. Annoyance foamed in her throat as she struggled up on her knees and looked at me. This is insane. I'm calling. Don't. We locked eyes in the darkness, and I refused to let go, no matter what she did next. If you call him, all hell's going to break loose, and I'll never save her in time. Brass can't do it. Neither can the devils. They'll talk too much. They're too slow. Saffron shook her head, frustrated. Save who? Is Jackie taking a shower? I asked. Saffron nodded, just as confused as I expected. Good. You don't have to make a scene and upset Jackie. You've got to go. Now. Take care of her for me, I said. I know I can count on you to do that. One day, I'll find some way to repay it. I couldn't ignore the shrill voice in my head. I took off and slammed the bedroom door shut behind me, flying down the stairs, leveraging surprise as much as I could. It worked. Saffron was only halfway down the staircase, screaming after me, when I pulled her purse off the kitchen table. Crap spilled out all over on my way out to her SUV, and I had the keys in my hand just in time. I popped the door and slid in. There was no time for my seatbelt. The vehicle started quick smooth, and I was backing out as she ran after me. I felt bad watching her pound the hood. She got off one beat, and I kept going. I didn't stop, tearing toward the road through the mountains, leading to the main highway. My hands went numb gripping the wheel. I didn't relax until I was all the way through town, constantly checking my mirrors for trucks and motorcycles behind me, trying to close in and stop what I had to do. When Brass and the Devils found out— They'd be furious. Just one more consequence I had to face. Nobody ever said doing the right thing was easy. This time, it was going to be an absolute bitch. I drove all night, heading toward Reading, following the dark, cold highways as best as I could. I'd never driven this kind of distance. Adrenaline, anxiety, and guilt rode with me. The sickness swirling in my blood wouldn't let me break— not until I ran my tank down and had to get gas. I stopped when I needed to for snacks and fuel, refusing to linger a second too long. For all I knew, Brass and the others were hot on my trail right now. I'd pissed off my old man, and probably the devils too, by hijacking Saffron's vehicle. I wasn't sure what was worse. It didn't really matter. It all paled next to the greater calamity. Letting Fang follow through on his savage promises— and tear her to ribbons. Krista seemed like such a sweet, soft-spoken woman. I couldn't let her suffer like this. I couldn't let her die screaming because of me. I believed Brass would try his damnedest to get her out. Maybe I'd get lucky and Fang would be dead by the time I got into town. The teacher with the dark red hair, freed by Black Jack and his men. Maybe. But I couldn't depend on it. I couldn't depend on anything except showing up and throwing myself at Satan's mercy, hoping he'd let her go, or at least spare her, by taking revenge on a bitch she had good reason to hate. It wasn't all about freeing Krista, either. I swore I'd keep lying, anything to buy time. I'd promise him the video and the entire fucking moon if it helped lead him one step closer to the grave Brass was digging. The journey was long— and I got lost several times, losing a couple hours. If I ever got out of this, I swore I'd learn to drive like nobody's business. Maybe I'd even figure out how to ride a Harley without being strapped to my old man on the back. My old man? It hurt to think about him. I'd stabbed him in the back and heaped more chaos on his life, and I seriously wondered if he'd want me if I got out of this alive. No, you can't think about that. I nodded, agreeing with the only comfort I had in my head. I had to stay focused. I had to put emotion aside, even if I was screaming down the road like a crazy girl, throwing myself to hell on a whim. 
I crossed three states I'd never been to before the trip up. My eyes felt like they were going to fall out by the time the sun came up. But I kept going, crazed and determined to show my face in Reading, to face the consequences. Someone had to pay for all this, and since Daddy was gone, it had to be me. I was ready to pay the very high price, anything for a chance at keeping her safe. No one else needed to die for my father's mistakes. If there was suffering, then it was earmarked for me. I'd see myself crucified before Krista or my poor sweet sister. It was almost noon when I finally got into town. My body got a second wind as I drove toward the clubhouse on the outskirts, ready to floor it at any sign of cops or bikers. Nothing was going to stop me from seeing the demon face to face. Nothing. The place certainly didn't look like a war zone when I pulled up. It was just like I remembered. A hard-faced man with grizzlies patches came wandering up to the gate. It was Crack, the foul-tempered VP, with two other greasy, long-haired men behind him. I got out and stepped up to the gate, leaving the vehicle running. His gun was out and pointed at me before I said a word. What the fuck are you doing here, bitch? I need to see Fang. It's about the video that's hurting your prez, and the woman you dickheads are holding against her will. Crack's fat nose twitched, his nostrils flaring. He nodded to the two big men next to him. Open the fucking gate. Pat her ass down before she goes inside. He looked at the SUV behind me. Somebody get that fucking thing in here, too. We can use another rig after losing two to the cartel last week. I'm sorry, Saffron, I whispered in my head. The thick iron bars slid open. Rough hands grabbed me and forced me behind the gate. They threw me to the wall and slid over me, rugged and unwelcome, taking much longer than they really needed to feel for weapons in my pockets. I didn't have any, of course. No, they were enjoying this. I'd tucked my wallet into my jeans at the last stop for gas, had to hold my breath when the mean-looking man pulled it out and bent it in half. One wrong angle, and they'd find what I had there for plan B, in case Fang didn't want to cooperate and free the redhead. I held my breath as his hands passed over it. He missed. Bastard was too busy feeling my ass instead. Sloppy. Typical. Perfect. Get your ass inside, Crack ordered. I'll take you to the prez myself. The familiar stink of the clubhouse burned my nose. All the cleaning I'd done when I was first captured hadn't done a damned thing. It smelled like fucking blood and alcohol, all mixed together, worse than the feral stink of death. Crack marched me down a different hallway, one I'd never seen before, past the office and the big room Fang reserved for himself. An old metal storage door at the end waited. He tore it open in one fist, grabbing me with his free hand and shoving me inside. My knees hit cement. The door slammed behind me. Oh, my God. I struggled to stand, shaking my head when I saw her. Appropriately enough, the room looked like a dungeon. It was bare, spartan, eerily cleaner than the rest of the clubhouse. Nothing inside except a few dirty rags in the corner, and the poor woman slumped in the chair in front of me. Krista looked worse in person than she did on video. My heart sank to my knees, and I walked toward her cautiously, wondering if she was even conscious. Krista, can you hear me? It's Missy Thomas. I hired you. The last sentence stuffed a lump in my throat. She didn't move until I touched her shoulder. She jerked awake, her dirty red hair flopping. Her eyes darted around and she moaned, scared out of her pale skin, and who could blame her? What? Missy? What are you doing here? I ran my fingers through her hair, trying to be reassuring. I've come to get you out. I'm taking your place. You're crazy, she sputtered. Her swollen lips were bad. It sounded like she was talking with food in her mouth. They'll kill you. Kill us both. No. You have to trust me. Just stay quiet. Wait until tonight. I've got a plan. Sure. Now I did. I had thrown it together at the gas station near the California border, the same place where I tucked the little goodie I picked up at the general store across the street. 
I hoped like hell I remembered how to pick locks the way Daddy taught me. I refused to say more. There was no point upsetting her or getting her hopes up. It was hard to judge her mental state, too. I had to stay quiet, wait for the devil to come calling, hoping he'd glowed and then walk away until tomorrow. It must have been an hour or two before the thick door opened. Fang glowered in the hallway, entering alone and leaving his demonic posse behind him. Krista flinched and whimpered when he walked past. I was sitting in an empty corner, and I stood up. My heart raced on pure instinct, but I wasn't afraid. My focus was all there, and it guided me. Let me look the monster right in his black eyes. I'm not sure who's stupider, he growled, pacing me like a lion. You were the rat I should have killed in front of you before he took out my men. I'm human. I made mistakes. I handed shit off I should have handled personally to lazy fucks who took their sweet time. They cut their own throats and let you take off with him. You and that kid. He sneered when he talked about Jackie. My heart pulsed in triumph. I liked remembering she was somewhere he could never reach her. Cut the crap, I snapped. You want the video Brass is using to blackmail you and ruin your reputation with your guys or what? He stopped pacing and gave me a hard look. Of course. I just can't believe they'd send a cunt like you to negotiate. I'm here on my own. A free agent. I went behind my man's back. It was strange to tell the truth, and it twisted like a sharp knife in my heart. I wasn't sure if he'd follow through for her. I motioned to Krista. But I can guarantee he'll do it for me. He'll show up, hand it over, and if he doesn't... Then I'll make the confession. I'll give you whatever you want, on tape. Tell you everything I know about how he forged it. Fang snorted, shaking his head. And then what? You think I should just let this pretty red-haired thing walk out of here alive so she can tell the cops? You think it's really that easy? You really think she'll talk? I still haven't. I just wanted to take my sister and get on with my life. So does she. That's not something you'll have to worry about for a long, long time. He laughed. It was a low, grinding, evil sound. Man, you're one fucked up girl. The only reason you never squawked is because your mouth is so full of rat dick you can't say shit. I'm really surprised about the kid, though. He looked thoughtful. Don't tell me she's sucking him off, too. Seems a little young for that, but that junky fuck never sat right with me long before he turned rat. Can't put anything past him. Fuck, what I would have given to let him burn back in Montana with the other traitors. Fang showed his teeth. I wasn't scared. I was too busy being pissed instead. Rage curdled my veins. I couldn't believe what he was saying, what he was accusing Brass of being. It took everything I could manage not to throw myself at his face and gouge out his eyeballs with my fingernails. Fang stepped back, taking a good long leering look at me. I barely stopped the cold shiver dancing up my spine before it took over. Nothing to say to that, he asked. Smart girl. I give you a lucky little star for doing one thing right. As for the rest of this shit, coming here and thinking I'd give you a damned thing... He crossed the room to the middle, stopping behind Krista. In a flash, he pulled his knife from his belt, tugging her hair while he held it to her throat. No! You fucking promised! Seventy-two hours aren't up. Me coming here shouldn't change that. He looked back at me and winked. The redhead groaned, shaking underneath his knife, her eyes spinning wildly. I could practically see her life flashing in the wide black pupils. There was a long, tense moment where I thought he was going to do it. I thought he'd cut her throat, ruin everything I came here to do, driving me insane as a nice little bonus. I held my breath, all I could do to stop the anger from throwing me at him like a human bullet. You know what? Fuck it. He stepped back, leaving Krista to fall back on her chair of misery. It'll be a lot more fun dismembering this bitch in front of you. I'll be sure the pussies and your old man get it all on tape. It'll be a sweet fucking preview of what's coming to you if they don't get their asses here and... What? We must be down to about fifty hours. Okay, whore. 
We'll stick to the original deadline. I'm a man of my word. Hot, angry, stale oxygen pumped in my lungs. I watched him give me a nasty grin and then grab the door, joining his men outside. I walked over to Krista and held her until she stopped fretting. It took a long time. Feeling her calm and soften in my arms helped me keep time, a long count of minutes and hours. It was the longest I'd ever kept count in my head, keeping it going long past what had to be midnight. Just hold on, Krista, hold on. He'll be free before dawn or I'll die trying. I felt bad for slapping her, but it was all I could do to get her up, make sure she was able to stand. I made Krista walk back and forth, wall to wall several times. If they'd fucked up her legs some way, then everything would go to shit. No, she could walk. The woman was just tired, dizzy, broken. I'd lead her out, slow and steady, as soon as I got the door open. It was finally time. I pulled the locksmith kit out of my pocket, one of those cheap Houdini things. The thick storage door was definitely going to be tougher than the crappy little room they'd held me in, but I had to try. It slid into the lock and sank deep. I twisted it, pressing on the handle, praying it wouldn't make too much noise and attract unwanted attention. Krista watched behind me. Having her eyes on me was like feeling God watching, or maybe Daddy eyeing me from above, desperate to see if I pulled this off. Shit. Shit. It was much harder than anything I expected. No matter how I pushed, jiggled, or swept it around in there, I couldn't seem to... Click. The thunk echoed loudly. I tested the handle and almost jumped up and shouted with joy when I felt it slide all the way, forcing the door to give way and creak open. There was no time for celebration. I grabbed Krista and let her out, dragging her toward the back exit as quickly as I could. Running into one evil-faced bastard could ruin us, but I'd done my part. Everything came down to luck now, and I prayed as we stepped outside, working our way around the huge garages, toward the gate. If there was a separate exit that wasn't fenced off, I didn't know it. I had to work fast on what little I knew about this place. Krista groaned a few times when I tried to make her move faster, but she handled it better than I expected better than a woman who'd just been damaged should. I thought the lights on the clubhouse were motion detectors, but they never came on. Luck smiled at us in the darkness, urging us closer, straight toward the manual switch embedded in cement, several feet away from the big gate. This one was more primitive than what the devils had at their place. I'd watched men simply tap the big button on several occasions. There was no code to exit. It was my turn to do the same. Krista stood in front of the bars, just like I told her, staring at me in the darkness as I tapped the dirty plastic key. The gate chugged open. She hit the pavement as soon as the gate gave her enough room. Joy pulsed through me, watching her survival instinct kick in, the hellish urge to run like nothing else. I stood there stupidly for a couple seconds, and then it was my turn. I ran toward the open gate and slowed when I saw my shadow. What the hell was it doing there in the night? Crap! The floodlights were on. I got two steps outside before I heard boots thundering behind me. Krista was halfway across the road. She looked back and screamed, right as several men tackled me to the ground. Go! Don't fucking stop! I yelled. Keep going, keep— a brute hand grabbed the back of my head and slammed me into the pavement, face first. I tasted blood and I couldn't speak. I looked up, seeing headlights. A vehicle was slowing next to Krista and I thought it was them. But the man inside driving looked like rabid. Someone screamed, go, 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 before the gunshots exploded over my head. The truck took off, roaring into the night. She was gone. I wasn't sure whether to be relieved or horrified, but I'd done my job. Krista escaped. I closed my eyes and let them lay into me. I didn't bother wasting energy fighting as they held my arms and legs, carrying me inside like a sick animal. I closed my eyes just as the gate growled shut in the distance. Before I opened them, the stink of the clubhouse interior hit me again. You're dead now, bitch. Dead! 
Do you fucking understand? A man roared in my face and pushed his cruel fingers around my chin. It hurt. But I didn't look at him until they hurled me back inside the room. I crashed right into the chair where Krista had been, rolling over my tender new bruises, until the wall stopped me. The door slammed shut like a tomb. I felt for my wallet and the lockpick I'd shoved into my pocket on the way out with Krista. It was gone in the mess. The assholes holding me were as sloppy as they were savage. Even they wouldn't fuck up twice. It didn't bother me that it was gone. If I still had it, they'd never leave that door unattended again. Not before somebody on one side or the other was dead. The killer who screamed in my face was probably right. The relief I expected from helping Krista refused to relax my chest, replaced with another sadness. I didn't care about dying if that was the price of helping her go free. But when I thought about how Jackie or Brass would react to my dead body if they saw it, the pain drove deep, a new dagger I had no way to pull out. God! God damn it! If only I hadn't frozen, if I'd been a few seconds faster! The crappy room finally felt like a prison for the first time. The realization bit harsh, bitter, and merciless, gnawing on my head and my heart. There was no getting out of this. No peace until death. If they killed me quicker and easier than Krista, and I knew they wouldn't, brass would burn. So would my poor sister. Yes, I'd saved the teacher. But now I damned myself and everybody stupid enough to ever love me. 10. Nuclear. Brass. Hours earlier. Hold him down, damn it! Just don't break his fucking wrists! The whole world went red the instant Shelley told me what happened over the phone. I flipped my shit at the devil's clubhouse, hopped in my truck, and tried to plow right through their gate. The bastards caught up to me when I wouldn't tell them why I was ready to go, why I had to blow town right that fucking instant. Missy. My Missy. My woman losing her fucking mind and heading to Redding alone. Scared, determined, and definitely no match for Fang, the fuck I swore I'd kill with my own bare hands. He was gonna die, that much was sure, long before we even headed up to Devil's Territory. But now the only question was whether I'd get my hands on his fat neck before he seriously fucked up my old lady. It took all three senior officers in their club to drag me back inside. I was about to ram my truck right through their fucking gate, but they were quick, shot out my tires and ran to my door, ripping it open, pulling me out, throwing me to the ground. I fought them all, kicking and screaming like a madman. Even colossal tanks strained to hold me down, pushing me to the ground with all his might, snarling like a wolverine as he kneed me in the spine and grabbed at my hands. Fuck! The asshole finally managed to get a strong hold on me, and I couldn't move. Stinger and one-eyed Moose stepped away cautiously, leaving me face to face with Blaze. The devil's prez grabbed me by the forehead and turned my head up, forcing me to look at him. Saffron just spilled the fucking beans, he growled. My old lady got her goddamn truck jacked by yours, but you don't see me going nuclear. Damn it, boy, settle the fuck down. My muscles were shaking. I forced myself to relax, the only damned way I was getting out of this. Blaze looked me up and down, then nodded to Tank, who gave a reluctant grunt and released me. I stood up, brushing the dirt off my cut. All four devils looked like they wanted to cut my ass to pieces every time they saw my colors on their home turf. Too fucking bad. This wasn't coming off except when I stripped down and showered or fucked my girl senseless. And now, because I hadn't stayed with her, I might never get to fuck her again. Fuck! I spun and clocked Tank right in the jaw. The giant's head snapped back and I pushed through them before any of the others could grab me, heading for my truck's open door. "'Jesus Christ!' Blaze roared. "'After his stupid ass!' I had one foot in the driver's seat before Tank caught up to me. I knew I was screwed before the giant's fist found the back of my skull. One deafening blow and the blackness swallowed me, turning everything jagged and red to smooth, dark shadows. "'Brass!' Someone snapped his fingers next to my ear. "'Wake your ass up!' "'Blaze!' a woman's voice said. I opened my eyes and saw him standing over me. At his side, some Blondian scrubs, probably the one named Emma I'd heard about. She was Tank's old lady and the club medic. 
Behind her, standing against the wall, there was a dark-haired beauty and my sis. They looked at me like I was a fucking ghost. I sat up and instantly felt the straps binding my arms. Hey, what the fuck? This was not what I needed. Shit, how many precious hours had I lost being laid out here in their infirmary, all while that sick son of a bitch had my girl at the clubhouse doing God knows what? We'll let you go when we know you can be a good boy, Tank growled behind me, out of my line of vision. You want me to give him the medicine, boss? Blaze nodded. Something strong in a glass pushed its way to my lips and I fucking choked. Tank held my mouth shut like a dog, making me swallow it. I thrashed, thinking I'd been poisoned. No, not poison. It was just Jack. Sweet, smooth, strong whiskey, something I thought I might never taste again. Fuck! I grunted between my teeth. We're giving you a shot to calm your ass down, Blaze said. We're damn lucky Blackjack's a chiller dude than you. I gave him a call, and he's going to work like hell to get your girl away from Fang. We're all on the same page, so you can stop worrying we're going to hold you down and slit your throat. Tempting as that would be. Get her away? Fuck, you need to stop her, Blaze. Tell Blackjack to sit by the highway. Make her pull over before she gets into town. Stinger stepped up next to Blaze and grinned. You've been out all fucking day, asshole. One of your brothers down there saw her drive in, but he couldn't do shit about it by himself. It was too late to stop her from rolling right into the bear's den. His harsh words almost set me off again. Almost. The whiskey definitely helped soothe the radioactive fire bristling in my blood, throbbing in my chest, ready to beat its way out of me. Save it, you fucking fool, I told myself. Save it for the fucks who really deserve it, not these prairie pussies. Just let me up, I said, resisting the urge to bolt up and punch every one of those fucks in their smug jaws the instant I could. Blondie looked at Blaze. I think it's time. We can't keep him strapped down here forever, Blaze. The devil's prez looked down at me and nodded. Tank hovered over me, undoing the straps on my arms. You're a prick, but you gave as good as you got, brass. Good hook. Hard fist. I can respect that shit. The giant motioned to the bruise I'd left on his face. I grunted, halfway amused. He was right there to knock me out again if I did anything stupid. I sat up, fighting to let go of the anger. I looked at Blaze. They've got my old lady. We need to ride tonight. Already working on it. You think I've been standing here jacking off while you were dreaming? Cocky as ever, he gave me a fierce wink. Unfortunately, there's no chance in hell we'll have time to pick up any guys from Dakota to help us out. It's just us, plus all the men you've got playing Freedom Fighter and Redding. My heart tightened. Steep odds. Blackjack told me about a third of the local guys deserted after our mutiny, but Fang still had numbers on his side. Possibly huge fucking numbers if the charters all along the West Coast decided to stay loyal and send in reinforcements. Whatever. Shit odds were nothing new to me. Having a woman on the line was, and not just any, but the one I cared for more than anything else in this fucked-up world. I slid off the table, standing. When do we leave? A couple more hours. Just need to get a few more things ready, Blaze said. You'll ride with Stinger and Moose. Gotta make sure you've worked all that piss out of your system, and you're not gonna do anything stupid. That was fair. Didn't change the fact that they were fuckers. I nodded. Blaze stepped out, giving Shelley a quick hug and a kiss on his way out. The other guys hung back, tucking into their old ladies. Seeing Tank press the tiny blonde into his immense frame and plant his lips on her made lava seethe in my veins. Then I saw Stinger, his arms wrapped around the dark-haired girl, whispering to her, I promise I'll be back before you know it, baby. Stay sexy and help Saffron with the girl while we're gone. Love you, Alice. You know I will, she purred. They kissed. Fuck! Panic burbled deep in my brain, the horrible possibility I might never see my girl again. Let alone hold her like that, suck her bottom lip, whisper all the thousands of sweet and filthy words pent up in my head. No. She's coming home in one piece. Same beautiful package I'd rip my fucking heart out for. You can't fucking lose her like you've already lost your mind. Hold on, babe. Your old man's coming. Brass. Shelley grabbed me on my way out. Bring everybody home safe, and that means you too. I managed a thin smile. Thanks, sis. Uh, sorry about the truck. I hope like fuck nothing's happened to it. I'll bring it home too if I can. You know I don't give a shit about the wheels. It's just one more thing to deal with. She rolled her eyes. The girl was upset. Crazy. I haven't even told her little sister yet. You work on that. 
I said. With any luck, I'll have her home with your ride so you don't have to tell Jackie how fucked up things are. She's been through too fucking much for a fourteen-year-old. I know. She looked at the ground sadly. And I remember what it was like for us at that age. You've got to be honest to keep them from going off the rails. Mom tried to hide how bad off she was until it drove you away and locked me down. Yeah. There was nothing more to say about it. She'd forgiven me for falling in with the fucks who'd slaughtered our disabled mother. The guilt still weighed heavy on my black heart, and saying shit about the bitter past would only feed it. You turned yourself around, Brass, she said, throwing her arms around me. I'm so damned proud of you for that. I know you can fix this, too. Go get the bastards who did this. Yes. Fuck yes. I couldn't do anything less than tear their throats out like the angry wolf I was, but this only sealed the deal. I pressed her tight to my chest, and then I was gone, following the devils out to the garages. The guns just needed to be loaded into their rides, waiting for the battle to come. My bones ached on the trip down, and not just from the fight. Crossing a good quarter of the continent in a week without much rest took its toll. Fuck if I was going to let it slow me down. I was wide awake. The pain stiffened my resolve. The devils and I didn't say much to each other. They understood what was on the line, and that was enough. The men glowered half as intense as me, big, bearded moose looking into the darkness like a one-eyed Viking sailing toward Valhalla. We took turns driving, following the convoy of bikes all the way to Redding. We finally veered off toward a remote spot near Shasta Lake, just north of town. Blackjack and the boys were using an old lake cabin as a base. Everybody took a breather for a few minutes after the long drive and then filed in. Shit, and here I thought the tension between the devils and I was thick. In the little makeshift cabin, it was fucking suffocating. Devils and grizzlies eyeballed each other like warriors from separate worlds. One wrong move was all it'd take to make bullets or knives start flying, murdering the uneasy alliance we both needed. Rabid came up and slapped my back. "'Welcome home, brother. I'm sorry as shit I couldn't get her out in time like Krista back there.' He pointed to the little bedroom. "'Fucking typical rabbit. If there was any pretty redhead who needed comforting, he was always the man for the job, though I wasn't sure how pretty she'd be after the brutal number Fang and his crew did on her. "'There's still time,' I growled. "'It's not over till Missy's out of that fucking dump and we've turned this club around for good.' A loud whistle silenced us before we could say anything else. Blackjack and Blaze were gathered at the little wooden table. All twenty guys from the two clubs coalesced in a circle. "'Make a little room for brass,' Blackjack growled. "'He needs to see this.' "'Fuck. See what?' I pushed my way through a couple big grizzlies, taking my place next to the de facto prez. Blackjack was holding a phone, his dark eyes glued to the screen. "'Sorry, son. This just came in a few minutes ago.' He held it up for everyone to see, especially me. They had Missy in the dank fucking storage room, parked on the same rickety chair where they'd tortured Krista. Fang was behind her, his sharp knife with the custom bear claw handle at her throat. Don't fucking do it, don't fucking do it, don't... My vision started to blur to red again. My fists shook at my sides. For a second it felt like the whole fucking universe was compressing into a tiny hot ball around me. Smaller, darker, and deader. My soul prepared to rocket out of my body and swing straight down to hell, screaming and killing anything that got in its way. The knife fell back, not even a trickle of blood on her throat. Thank God. You know the drill by now, assholes. Fang's voice was more irritated than I had ever heard it. Different girl, same terms, except you've just cut your remaining time in half. You're down to five hours to comply. I expect the tape... The confession and the rats by o sixteen hundred, or I'll be carving two pieces off this cunt for being so troublesome, starting with those pretty tits. The video went blank, but not before I had a perfect shot of Missy's face. She looked eerily calm, numb, like her heart and mind had shut down to survive the world of pain coming her way. He was fucking hurting her, even if he hadn't laid a scratch on her yet. My fists burned, hungry to punch, choke, break, and kill. Just seeing Fang's rotten carcass wasn't enough for me any more. I had to beat everybody else to the punch and kill him myself, or I'd never sleep again. Fuck. Brass? Blackjack, Blaze, and half the room stared at me. I swallowed my rage, saving it for later, nursing the swollen fireball in my stomach. What's the plan? Direct assault, 
Blaze piped up. It's the only fucking way. We gotta go for their throat, quick as we can, and hope we tear it out before we got a hundred fucking bears nipping at our legs. Angry eyes fixed on the devil's president. No offense, he added, diffusing tensions by half a degree. Tank? No disagreement, boss. We don't have too many options, and waiting sure as fuck won't help. Wait. Everybody looked at me, but I didn't meet their eyes. I was too busy staring through the small crowd, back towards the sad redhead in the bedroom. The door was open, and she was standing. Her back was turned to us, and she was gazing out the window. We know the video wasn't foolproof, I said. Fang's guaranteed to have numbers on his side. Doubt half the charters believed it, especially since it came from the devils. I don't see where you're going with this, Blackjack said, furrowing his brow. What the fuck, Brass? I walked around the table and leaned into his ear. Step in the back with me. I want her to hear it, too. Blaze followed, and I didn't stop him. He had every right to know what the fuck was up with his men on the line and two grizzlies whispering to each other. The other men waited while we stepped into the room and closed the door behind us. Krista turned around. Her face was bad, scratched, and puffy as shit. She'd been a pretty girl, and our former brothers had definitely fucked her up. Almost felt guilty for the shit I was about to propose, but it was the only thing that might save all our asses from getting slaughtered, plus Missy, too. Brass, what the fuck is this? Blaze was getting impatient. I spilled it. Both their jaws hit the fucking floor when I laid it out. Krista listened silently. When I was finished, Blaze spun, slammed his fists on the wall. He turned back to face me, shaking his head. You're out of your fucking mind. I know it's your old lady and nobody can think right when something like that's on the line. But fuck, man, you're asking us to take one hell of a risk with some chick who's already been through the grinder. I've got to agree with Blaze, Blackjack said. This is... His face tightened. Fucking nuts, he was about to say, or something like it. He hesitated, trying to soften the blow for my sake. Sorry, Brass, he said. Direct assault's the only way to clean this mess up and get your girl out. You know it. Stop. Krista spoke, soft but determined. I'll do it. A couple hours later, everything was ready. Less than three hours to spare before the demon in our clubhouse started laying into my woman. Just enough time. Blackjack had every copy of the tape the devils brought, and all the men were ready to ride. Rabbit was still milling around the beat-up redhead. I walked over, more than a little nervous he was about to talk some sense into her. Fuck, I couldn't force her to do shit if she pulled out, but if she did, we'd be fucked so bad there was nothing left to do but ride into a massacre. You sure you want to do this? Rabbit watched her nod as I approached. Fuck, you're a brave, brave girl. I'm going to be right there with you, baby. No fucking way am I going to let anybody drag you back where you don't belong. Those fucks will never get their paws on you again. I laid a hand on his shoulder. Where is it? Rabbit looked at me, smiled, and pointed at the Harley several feet away. She's all there. Got her out right in the nick of time, before Fang and company stole her, right before everything went to shit at the warehouse. Thank fuck. I'd have to skin all their greedy asses for sitting on my baby. Rabbit stayed with the redhead while I walked to my bike. Jesus, it had only been about a week, but it felt like half a fucking lifetime. The only thing sweeter than sliding onto my Harley again would be having Missy in my arms, and I was dead set on it. I swore to heaven and hell I'd put everything in my life back where it belonged. I couldn't wait to get my woman back, even more than I wanted to put a bullet in Fang's head for what he'd done. Love's a powerful fucking thing when it tames rage, tames hate, and everything else in between. There was a lot to snarl at in all this, but mostly I just wanted her home. She'd never get off my bike or out of my bed after this. Never. The first thing I was going to do when I had her again was squeeze her so fucking tight she'd never dream about walking into harm's way for the rest of her life. Later, I'd spank her pretty ass raw for doing this. What I really missed was those lips, their taste, their softness, their sweet flutter on mine, like honest-to-fuck pixie wings. I'd been too soft, too distracted with club business. The realization hit me right between the eyes like a hot sword boring into my skull. Now my entire soul bled for her, bled dirty red blood from a scalding wound that wouldn't close till I had what was mine pressed up against me again. There was no other cure. Nothing else would undo the damage I'd taken, my failure to keep what was mine close as my own gun. Two hours! Blackjack's voice howled near the front of the column. Let's fucking go, boys! 
A dozen engines growled, igniting as one, joined by a few stragglers at the end. I strapped on my helmet and felt the comforting purr of my Harley beneath me. She'd always been a fine war horse, and now I needed her to carry me to my girl. Blackjack pulled out first. We all hit the highway and rode down toward Redding. I was near the front, with Rabbit and the Redhead on his bike, only separated by Blackjack and Blaze by Tank. It was a weird, motley platoon of sworn enemies riding toward hell, joined together in a fucked-up marriage all about saving the asses in the leather seats today. Motorcycles rumbled behind me, at least ten of them, and then a couple trucks from both clubs bringing up the rear. Blackjack agreed to meet Fang near a hilly wilderness outside town. We'd promised him everything, but we knew he'd be on alert for us fucking him over. Hoped like hell the ruse I had planned would be such a shock he wouldn't see it coming. It all came down to conscience. Fang didn't have one. Some devil had ripped it out of him and chewed it up ages ago. But did the rest of the club? We were about to find out. The column slowed when we roared onto the unpaved road heading for the forest clearing. They were parked by the trees, legions waiting for us. Even my eyes bugged out when I saw how many grizzlies Fang brought to cover his ass. Fuck, he must have had half the Tacoma and Portland charters, plus more brothers from Idaho. Basically, every able-bodied man who wasn't busy getting killed down south by the cartel's raiders. Shit, there must have been a hundred guys to our fifteen, possibly more, and he was fully surrounded. Protected. Blaze and Blackjack stopped a few feet away, undaunted by the huge army facing them. I pulled up next to them, and Rabbit did too. My brother looked nervous as shit, keeping his hands on the redhead till she pulled away forcefully. My eyes scanned the guys next to Fang and Crack. Fuck, they were supposed to do the exchange here. Where the fuck was she? Where'd he put my girl? My heart forced adrenaline-loaded waves into my blood. I shook, sweated, rubbed the nine-millimeter in my belt. Easy, I told myself. They'll see that shit and hit you between the eyes before you take a single step forward if you make a dumb move. She's gotta be here somewhere. He wouldn't have left her at the clubhouse with nobody there on guard duty. I counted all the bastards who'd stuck with him from my club. Ruff, Gnaw, Pitbull, Chubb. Five more prospects past them. No, they were all there. That meant Missy had to be with them, tucked back in the crowd, maybe bound up in one of their fucking trucks. Blackjack looked at me and nodded. I walked with him and Blaze. Krista moved up several steps behind me. Rabbit had to hang back or else there'd be more guys on the other side coming to meet us besides Fang and Crack. Nobody wanted that shit. More brothers eyeball to eyeball meant more danger. What the hell's this? Fang grunted, stopping in the middle. I asked for the video, the rats, and a confession. Didn't ask to see this fucking bitch again. He spat at the ground. Blaze grabbed the small black package underneath one arm and threw it on the ground. Here, asshole. Five copies. There's the master, plus the fucking camera it was shot on. That's everything. Fang reached down and picked it up, grinning on his way up. He looked at me, and then at Blackjack. Okay, let's go, boys. We've got a nice trial ready out back with all your brothers. Promise we'll make it quick, just as soon as one of you fucks tells us straight up where that video came from. Trial. Right. Never heard the shallow graves he probably had waiting in the woods called that before. I looked him in the eye and reached for the redhead, grabbing her hand. I shot that fucking video, I said loudly, making sure everybody could hear. You never ordered the hit. The bastard was just a fucking freak trying to fuck my old lady's little sis. I killed him. I framed you. I fucked up. Fang let out an angry laugh. Ha! <laughs> Damned right you did, kid. Hmm. I suppose that's confession enough, but I'm still gonna want it on camera before we decide how to end this. Didn't think you'd give it up so easy. He licked his lips. Fucker had murder written all over them. I smiled. That's because I thought this was all harder and more complicated than it really is. I didn't see all the evidence of the shit you've done right underneath my nose. What fucking evidence? I reached behind me and grabbed her, holding her in front of my chest. Krista flinched once, but then stood still, staring at the monster through her swollen eyes. This. Take a good long look, everybody. This is why we turned on National. This is why we'll never follow this motherfucker as long as he's prez. I was screaming. Crack looked at me in a stupor, and Fang's eyes darkened. Didn't think it was possible for him to beam more hate, but he sure as fuck did. My hands loosened near her belly, holding on tight, ready to throw her down as soon as he let the demon inside him off its chain. 
This is what our prez does. He rips innocent girls to pieces. He kills anybody who disagrees with that shit, frames them as rats. He's too fucking busy fattening his own wallet off the blood this club spilled to inspire us, and that's exactly why the cartel's running over our bodies. We beat him by being better than vermin. Right now, this club's just as brutal, just as fucked up. Is that what you wanted for the Grizzlies MC when you put on that patch? Silence. A long, tense, fiery quiet. The surprise on Fang's face shrank, slow and vicious, turning into volcanic anger. His hand flew to his hip, surprisingly spry for a man his age. I had exactly one second to throw Krista to the ground and keep her there while he fired. The gunshot echoed loud over the horizon. I waited for more, holding my breath, wondering if we were all about to die. Shit! Blaze cursed. I rolled, looked up, and saw the hole in Blackjack's thigh. He hit the ground, clenching his leg, blood pooling between his fingers. Fuck! Fang missed us and hit the only man worth serving in this fucking club instead. One shit spoken and about a thousand more to go. Only way to describe the situation. Blackjack clenched his leg harder, a sinister smile on his face. Blaze crouched with his gun and everybody in our crew behind us locked and loaded. I was reaching for my own sidearm, ready to blow Crack's fucking head off. Except I didn't have to. The bastard's skull exploded before he could draw on me, and it came from behind him. Fang spun, stunned silence twisting the sneer on his face. The huge throng of grizzlies serving him had their guns drawn on each other. Another shot exploded. Another guy went down, one of Fang's men. Total fucking chaos. The guys who'd decided they didn't want any part of serving the asshole hit the dirt. Some ran toward us, only to be mowed down by the bastard staying loyal. They were brutal fucks, men like Cereal, who loved everything Fang did to drive this club into the ground, hungry for more of it to satisfy their sadistic urges. I struggled to stay down, protecting Krista, but I had to see what the fuck was going on. All that mattered to us was numbers. If enough of them mutinied, especially in this storm, we had a chance. Looking to my other side, I saw Blackjack keeping focus, pressing both hands tight to his wound. Blaze had his gun trained on Fang, who was hightailing it back to the guys he had left. Shit. The Devil's Prez emptied his clip, and one hit the bastard in the leg. Fang dropped, grunted, and started to crawl. He was on the ground, roughing his way forward, when several goons ran toward him and picked him up. Our guys were pouring past me now. Rabid leaned down to me, reaching for the woman's hand. Let her go, bro. I got her. Need to get her to the rear. I nodded. Good. Now I was free to go, following the long push toward the woods where lots of vehicles were abandoned in all the commotion. Missy! Missy! I screamed her name when I got closer, looking all over for anything bigger than a bike or maybe a pit where they'd thrown her for the exchange. Nothing. More shots rang out around me and several brothers wrestled on the ground, grizzlies and the odd devil doing close combat. A dead-eyed fuck popped out of the trees and lunged with his dagger drawn. I blew his head off and went forward, forward, heading for the place where I'd seen them dragging Fang. No fucking way was he getting away alive. Not today. Someone tugged on the back of my cut. I spun, pressed my gun to his head, and felt my heart stick in my throat when I saw it was Blackjack struggling to upright. Christ! You should have stayed back. What the fuck's going on? Keep going, son, he growled. Don't fucking worry about me. I can't rest until I see him dead. We have to find him. I nodded. The gunfire was dying down around us, and I was relieved to see mutineers and devils standing around prisoners gathering the fucks together who'd thrown down their arms. Blackjack hung close to me. We walked through the trees, and I cleared a path for him through the brush. Almost tripped on a dead man with a hole through his chest. Shit, it was one of the bastards who'd grabbed Fang. He had to be somewhere. I heard him before we caught up through the brush. He'd rolled through the weeds toward a shitty little pond, and he was holding his legs, screaming at the asshole who'd gone with him. Come on! Keep fucking moving! We can't stop! We've got to get out of here! The man groaned. I saw he was bleeding out from a hole in his stomach, barely even conscious. The soon-to-be-dead Prez was still berating the poor bastard. Suddenly, Fang pulled his gun, pressed it to the man's temple, and fired. Fucking useless! All of you! This is what I get for thirty fucking years of glory! I made this club! It was all me! Me! And now you bastards are tearing it to pieces, turning over like snakes and cowards, ruining everything I gave you! 
I told Blackjack to hang back and pushed through the weeds first. He fired at the weeds I rustled, and a new emotion I'd never seen entered his eyes. Fear. Arctic terror. And it was goddamned beautiful. Two bullets buried themselves in the mud, dangerously close to my leg. I kept going. His gun was clicking on empty by the time I stood over him. Blackjack pushed his way to my side, breathing a little heavier than before. Both our guns were trained on him. I got ready to squeeze the trigger first and take flak later. Blackjack deserved the kill almost as much as me, but no fucking way was I letting someone else hand Fang his one-way ticket to hell. Don't! Fang roared, throwing a hand up, as if he still had a choice. We can figure something out. Take my patch, drain my money, ship my ass to Alaska. You can't fucking kill me. You know I built this thing from my bare hands, Blackjack. I built you! You built yourself a tower of shit, Fang, the old man said. There was a time when we needed a man like you in charge. Not anymore. You spilled too much blood, carved too much flesh. It's no wonder we've got wolves at our gates. You want to live? I stepped up, pressing my gun to his temple. He nodded, shifting his evil head against my gun. Then tell me where you've got her. Where's my old lady? Fang licked his lips. There's a van parked about a mile from here. Nobody in it but her. Tied up and gagged in the trunk. I was going to send my guys to get her if you hadn't fucked me over, but I knew you would. I knew it. I keep my fucking word. Always. Do you, Brass? I looked at Blackjack. He nodded. You do the honors, son. No. But I'm going to say thanks for being honest just once in your life, I growled to Fang. He was shaking. I pulled the gun back, stuck it in my holster, and brought out my knife. Let him feel a second of misplaced relief before I let him see it. The fear in the ex-pres's eyes swelled, and then it was just a reflection of murder. I did everything he threatened to do to my girl. Peace by fucking peace. Blackjack watched for five grisly minutes before I finally slammed my blade into Fang's skull. When it was over, I cut away his patch and threw one arm over the old man, helping him struggle back through the brush. Put me down, he said, as soon as we saw the devils in our crew again. They'll take it from here. Go. Go find your woman. I didn't need to be told twice. I found the worn blue van parked off a little service road right where the asshole indicated. All my muscles tensed up as I approached the trunk. A man never knows what he'll find in the back of a car in this world. If the lying bastard hurt her, killed her, then I'd run right back into the woods and dismember his ass all over again. What little was left to slice and dice, anyway? Shit, if he'd lied to me, I'd learn the darkest black magic I could to make sure his soul suffered worse in Satan's care than it already deserved. I shook my head, pushing away the fucked-up thoughts. The glass was dirty, and I couldn't see inside. There was no sign of anyone screaming or banging within. My hand caught the handle and pulled. It was unlocked, and it popped open with a whoosh. Fuck. There she was. Gagged, red-eyed, balled up in the tiny space next to some old oil bottles, her hands and feet bound. But she was alive. Missy tried to scream through the dirty rag in her mouth when she saw me. I threw myself in, pulling her into my arms, reaching for the same knife I'd just used to send Fang to justice. I cut her bindings first, then sliced carefully past her hair, ripping away the shitty cloth blocking her sweet lips. "'Baby girl!' I said it softly, just as she sucked in a huge breath and started to cry. I flattened her on my chest, stroking the soft brown hair I was damned lucky to feel once again. I wondered how the hell it always stayed magnificent sexy, even when she'd just been on a round trip through Hades. The asshole's dead. So are all the shits who did this to you. It's over, babe. There's nothing left for you to fear. Brass. She croaked my name and I helped pivot her face up to mine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. I had to do the right thing. I didn't realize saving her and putting myself on the line would hurt you, hurt Jackie. She shuddered. Her face scrunched up, and I thought the waterworks were going to keep flowing, but she caught herself at the last second, drawing in a deep breath. I was screwed up, mess. I thought I was strong, but I cracked in there. She gestured to the van. They left me bound up, and then I heard the gunshots. Look at me. I'm a fucking mess. Quiet, babe. I growled, a little more angrily than I intended. She blinked. It's okay to scream and scratch the ground when some fuck keeps you under the gun. You're doing what comes natural. But I want you to listen real fucking close and get this through your head. 
She tensed up in my arms. I clenched her tighter. No fucking way was I letting her slip away before I drilled it into her pretty skull. You're my fucking mess. You're my old lady. I own you, babe, now to the last day I'm alive and breathing on this rock. If you think freaking out or showing me you're scared and hurt's gonna drive me away, think again. Open up your head and make sure you're thinking at all, if that's what's running through your sweet head. I paused, inhaling her delicious scent, pressing my forehead to hers. I love you, Missy. I don't say that shit easy. I never fucking said it to anyone till you came along. Not even Shelly. My love's a wrecking ball, and it only swings one way once it gets going. You got it? You're mine, babe. Mine to love, and only mine, whether you're howling underneath me in bed or walking into minefields to save some chick. When I pulled my face away from her, she was trembling a little, but I knew it wasn't fear. She was fucking overwhelmed. And that was okay. Long as she was full of the same crazy thing I had ticking for her in my chest, I didn't give a damn. I was about to start walking her back when she pinched her hands around me, feeling me up right there in the forest, raking her nails down my back like she couldn't believe I was real. Fuck me if I didn't get goosebumps singeing my skin while my dick swelled in my dirty pants. Babe, we need to get the fuck— She flung her face forward, crushing her lips against mine before I could say another word. And I mean really pressed them tight in the hungriest kiss I'd ever had with a chick in my entire life. It sucked all the hot air right out of my lungs, shocked me through my skull, lit my fucking blood on fire. Then I couldn't think about anything at all except this incredible kiss. My brain knew it was better than sex, though my cock would have protested that with all his might. We kissed for what felt like an hour out there in the wilderness, the wind blowing small wafts of burned flesh and blood toward us every so often. Shit, the club was going to be cleaning up this mess for days, hopefully before any badges figured out who left a small battlefield behind. None of that mattered. It was as distant as the damned moon. I just focused on her taste, her smell, swirling my tongue around hers. Didn't matter how many times I took what was mine. It never got old, and it never would. She was like a perfect fruit that stayed ripe, waiting for my mouth, waiting for me to own her flesh the best way I knew how. I love you, Jordan, she said after a small eternity locking lips. You know I'm not going anywhere as long as you keep giving me chances. I can't promise I won't screw up again. My life's got a lot of work left to straighten it out. And Jackie... God, where is she? I smiled. Shelley's bringing her down with a rental as soon as we sound the all clear. Should be here tomorrow now that we've cleaned house. The devils won't be hanging too long. They'll be itching to get home as fast as they can rather than clean up our fucking mess. Wow. You've really thought of everything, haven't you? She quirked an eyebrow. No way, babe. I've got a lot of shit on my plate. I've still got to find a place for us to settle down. Maybe book a nice long getaway to Vegas or Reno. We've all got a lot to clear out of our heads. Best way I know how is drinking, fucking, and gambling. She cocked her head, looking at me like the crazy bastard I was. All right, we can throw in a mud bath massage thing or two at the spa. Whatever you girls like. Jerk! She punched my arm playfully, wiping the last salty remnants out of her eyes. I shrugged, starting to walk her toward my bike. Had to take the furthest loop possible to keep her away from the savage scene left near the woods. It's what I do. And I'm gonna keep jerking your sweet ass around every way that's good for you as long as you call me your old man. I guess I'd better get used to it, she mused. This is what I got myself into. And there's no way I'd ever want out. I grinned. Next thing on the list after settling club business was getting her a proper brand. Fuck, she'd look hot as hell wearing my name on her back in leather and somewhere on her skin to boot. The whole ride into town with her wrapped around me, I couldn't believe we'd built ourselves something so real out of playing pretend. Several days later. We were packed in like sardines at the clubhouse. There were so many brothers from all the charters up and down the coast, Blackjack had to get the Grizzlies' MC table dragged out into the bar using the main stretch for this mega-church session. The tension was thick, but it was an anxious, uncertain fog in the air, not the same scared-for-our-lives shit buzzing around under Fang. I sat at the head of the table next to Blackjack, Rabbit, and a couple other guys. The old man lifted the infamous bear claw off the bandage on his thigh where he'd kept it resting until he was ready. Everything about this shit was weird. Everything, from the throngs of grizzlies in front of us to seeing him with an energy in his eyes like nothing else. Then there was the brand new VP patch on my cut, something I never thought I'd be wearing till after I hit thirty. 
Brothers! Blackjack smashed the bear's foot on the wood. The commotion started to die down with the local prezes helping quiet their men. All their eyes focused on us. Good thing I didn't have any issue being the center of attention. Wasn't sure I could say the same about Rabbit. He looked a little freaked out. But maybe he was just trying to figure out how the fuck he was going to explain going after his new red-headed fixation to his favorite red-headed whore. He kept showing up at Krista's doorstep, ostensibly to keep tabs on her and make sure she stayed quiet after the shit that went down. But it seemed like he was going out of his way to do more than that. "'This is a brand new day for the Grizzlies, M.C.,' Blackjack said as soon as it was quiet, except for restless boots scraping the floor. "'There's no need to sit here on my perch and recount the turmoil we've been through the past few months. Suffering under a tyrant, fighting the cartel off our throats, working with an M.C. we've spilled blood with.' Several brothers in the audience growled. I wasn't going to start loving prairie pussies any time soon, but I didn't feel the old aching need to slam daggers into the backs of the sorry bastards who'd bailed our asses out either. Hold on to those memories. Then take your best blade, dig them out of your skull, and set them on fire. Blackjack paused, letting his words sink in. They're all done. Nothing but ashes now. Once upon a time, the Grizzlies' MC was great. We had the tightest brotherhood from Billings to San Diego. No other club fucked with us west of the Mississippi because they'd get swarmed before they even thought about drawing our blood. I looked through the crowd. The tired, worn-out men with gray in their hair and beards knew those days. It was no surprise a lot of the old-timers had deserted Fang first. With me heading national now, we're bringing those days back, brothers. There's plenty of shit ahead left to sort out. Rogue charters, Mexican hitmen, the cash flow situation, but we'll do it. We always do. The blood of every brother who's fallen for this club flows in your veins. Guard it the same way you guard your colors and remember what it means. If you do that, boys, you're already halfway there. Men stood and applauded. I looked at Blackjack and gave him a stern nod. Had to assert my authority, after all. The man had a gift for gab, though. Nobody in the room could deny it. The meeting was way too big to be anything but a ceremony for crowning the new leadership. The real business would come later, filtering down the charters from border to border, dangerous and glorious as it always was, and always would be with a man in charge who deserved to be called Prez. A couple minutes later, the bear claw came down with a resounding clack. Church dismissed! Now go rock the fucking roof off! What would be the biggest gathering of the club in years without a send-off party? I hung around and had a couple beers, shooting the shit with Rabbit and a couple other guys. The whores rolled in about an hour later. I passed Twinkie in the crowd a couple times, and she gave me a longing look. I turned my back and showed her the bear patch without hesitation. No fucking way was my dick going in any pussy that wasn't attached to my old lady from now on. No other pussy compared. Maybe it meant I was growing up, or else I'd just lost my damned mind. Regardless, I was dead set on doing right by my woman and my club. Taking the VP patch seriously meant the days of getting stinking drunk and fucking random sluts was behind me. They faded into smoke, almost as distant and unworldly as the ones I'd lived pushing shit into my veins. Brass. A hand fell on my shoulder, and I turned, setting my empty beer glass on the bar. Blackjack stood behind me, decked out with a few more patches on his old cut. I've got something I need to give you, son. Come with me. I followed him down the long hall, passing several brothers with girls against the wall, their hands dipping between the bitch's legs. Loud rock drowned out almost all the sound, blasting through the clubhouse's sound system. We stopped in front of the storage room. I gave him a dark look as he opened the huge door. The thing was slowly turning into a real storage room, changing from the dank and brutal dungeon it had been under Fang. He walked me back to the end of two new shelves and then grabbed a big black bag. Right where I left it. Take it, and get the hell out of here. It was awfully familiar. Heavy, too. I looked inside and did a double-take when I saw all the cash stuffed in there. What the fuck? This is Missy's old inheritance. I looked up, meeting his eyes. I thought this shit belonged to the club's coffers now. Not anymore. A million in cash is what your girls deserve for their pain and suffering through all this. He reached into his pocket, plucked out a cigarette, and gave it a light. This club's got to get its sins right. I'd give you the rest, but it's already been deposited and spent, laundered through our legit operations. It's plenty. There'll be more for her if she wants to work the club's books. 
We need an accountant who can keep her mouth shut. Beryl decided to go down with Fang's ship, and I'm not sure about any other brothers keeping watch, he said, talking about our old club treasurer. Fucker had been skimming money off left and right for years. So did Fang. Fat lot of good it did them in the end. I nodded. Blackjack looked at me and waved his hand. Go on, Brass, get lost. You deserve a little fun before we come home to our war tomorrow, and I know you won't find it here. Thanks, Brez. You're the fucking best. I really meant it. I tucked the money carefully into my saddlebag and rode, fast and hard, taking off to the hotel where I had the girls while we waited to find something more permanent. Is Jackie home? I asked, as soon as I pushed my way into the kitchen. I tucked the bag in the closet near the door, just out of view. Missy ran toward me and gave me a kiss. My cock jerked fierce. Damn, that woman had a gift for making me jump, no matter how tired or preoccupied I was with other shit. As soon as her lips landed on mine, there was one thing on my mind. It was hard as fuck to put sex on hold, but I needed to do this. She's doing homework. Why? Get her in here right now. I got something for you girls. Both of you. She gave me an odd look and then moved to the door, joining our two rooms. I'd rented double, knowing we'd be here for at least a week or two. One knock and the kid opened up. She came out and both of them sat at the little table in the corner. I ripped open the closet and pulled it out. It took my girl several seconds to realize what was coming down in front of her. Then her hand trembled, reaching for it cautiously. Present from Blackjack. The shit you were owed all along from your dad. It's not everything, but I think you'll agree it's plenty. Missy unzipped it and pushed her hands through crisp, fat stacks of cash. Jackie let out a squeal and jumped out of her chair, looking like she'd just run face-first into one of those gawky boys she loved to listen to, singing about broken hearts or some shit. Use it wisely, girls. I know you will. Missy dropped the two wads of money she was holding back into the bag. It was her turn to freak out, jump into my arms, and wrap her legs around me. Big fucking mistake. I couldn't resist kissing her hard, all while her little sis laughed and made a face. Thank you, she whispered. You don't even know what this means. Yeah, babe, actually I do, I said. Means you're going to send the kid to college and finish school yourself. Then you're going to do whatever the fuck you want with that money. It only took a drive through hell to bring it back where it belongs, right? Right, she agreed, pushing her smiling face into mine. We'd spilled a lot of blood and suffered to turn everything upside down right side up again. And now it was all worth it clear as the sun and laughter lighting up the room. 11. Room to Love Missy One month later. The Nevada sun was high and hot, but I wore it anyway. Ever since I put on the jacket with property of brass sewn on its leather back a couple days ago, I felt totally naked without its smooth, comforting embrace on my skin. I sat beneath a sunbeam at the massive casino hotel, looking down over the pool where Jackie spent the majority of the last two days when she wasn't with us. My little sis was definitely making the most of her memorial day, stretching out in the warm water, trying to catch a tan. Some gawky-looking boy kept coming around, making her flush and giggle. Shit, is that kid sniffing around the girl again? I turned and saw Brass standing there with my afternoon coffee and a beer for himself. Oh, leave her alone, I said with a smile. She's having fun here. I'm sure she likes having somebody besides us for company. Says the big sis, who doesn't notice all the friends she's been having over lately. Brass narrowed his eyes, still looking out the window. Girlfriends are one thing. I'm keeping my eye on that fucking punk, though. She's too young to know a good man. I laughed and rolled my eyes. I hope we have a daughter someday. You're going to make one hell of a dad. That got his attention. He stepped away from the huge window and pulled me up, tugging me into his arms. Fuck, babe. Any kid you give me is gonna come out so perfect I'll have it easy. But right now, I'm too damned horny to worry about changing diapers or waving a shotgun in some scrappy boy's face when he comes by for prom. Oh. I looked down and noticed the lump in his pants. Sounds like we'd better go take care of that. You never know when Jackie might get sick of her company and come knocking for another night on the Vegas Strip. 
Plenty of time for everything, Missy. He leaned closer as we walked toward our room. I'm gonna fuck you hard enough till we can get back to it around midnight. You're gonna feel it when you slip your heels on and hit the town tonight. I'm not ashamed to leave you sore. No, he wasn't. The instant we pushed into our room and he kicked the door shut, he ripped the coffee cup out of my hand and set it on the bathroom counter. Save that shit for later. You'll need to pick me up when we're through. Rough hands pushed me to the wall, and he sank down, tasting my lips, kissing his way across my throat while he groped my breasts through my shirt. Jesus, the leather wrapped around me was really sweltering hot now. I tried to push it off, but Brass grabbed me by the shoulders and shook me. You lose everything but that. Leave it on, old lady. I want to see my name on you when we fuck. Brass. He tugged at my jeans and then my panties. They came off fast and he allowed me to step out of them. Then he grabbed my legs, pushed them to the wall, keeping my thighs splayed apart for his face. Shit, that feels so good. And that was only the first lick. It was somewhere beyond amazing by the third or fourth time his tongue pushed into my wet pussy, lapping cream and readying me for the ecstasy he promised. I tensed, pivoting my fingernails on his scalp for support, the only thing that would keep me from toppling over while his tongue work quickened. My heartbeat spiked with a rising pleasure. My knees started to shake around him, but he only tightened his grip, looking up at me with hungry eyes. His tongue smothered my clit and rolled, circular and delicious, its energy shooting straight to my very heavy head. You'd better fucking come for me, babe, his eyes said. Keep fucking my tongue. Don't stop till you squirt. Have you forgotten whose pussy this is? I heard the answer throttling in my head, just as I squeaked out one last breath before the fire overwhelmed me. Mine. He burned the word into my flesh, wild and wicked as the first time he said it, everything I'd ever be for the rest of my life. My muscles convulsed. I pinched my fingers tighter through his hair and screamed. My ass climbed the wall several inches before rocking into his insatiable mouth again, bucking, grinding, fucking the man I'd given myself to, loving his sweet control. It was total, overpowering and sweet, even when he had his face between my legs. Hot breaths and the cool rush of air where he'd been woke me out of my stupor. I looked down and saw him wiping his mouth. Then he stood and began to loosen his belt. Get your pretty ass over to the bed. I nodded, trying to shake the orgasmic tickle out of my legs as I went. The room was a total luxury with padded beds, decorated like a palace, so was the adjoining one we had for Jackie. I almost felt guilty laying down on the big bed, naked and exposed. It was a far cry from the dirtier, duller places we'd always fucked before. How does it come so natural for you here? I whispered, admiring his naked body. The bed sank down as he settled between my legs, catching my hair in one fist. You talking about these digs? Shit, babe. I wouldn't think twice about fucking you in the Taj Mahal. If you think this place is too good for us, think again. I haven't begun to give you what you deserve. Yeah. I reached between my legs for his dick, already poised dangerously close to my pussy lips. Show me. His eyes practically burst into flames and melted out of their sockets. He fucked his way right through my hand and swung his hips down, pushing his way inside me until my fingers couldn't hold him any more. Fuck, Brass growled, his beautiful tattooed chest swelling as the fire danced lower. I got no problem handing out reminders when you're this tight and wet. Stop thinking, babe. Turn your head off and fuck me as hard as you can. He kept his thrusts slow, hard, intentionally teasing me with rough, long, steady strokes, until I began to buck back, the itch in my womb exploding inside me. Amazing what a little sex could do to clear the mind. All the worry and doubt eroded, stroke by stroke. Soon, I had my arms and legs wrapped around him tight as he fucked harder, desperately rising to meet his thrusts 
every part of me winding up in the sheer need to... Come, Brass growled. Let it fucking go for me. I want to feel fireworks around my dick. His wish? My command. My body couldn't say no to the mad heat roiling my clit, his fullness rocking and thrashing inside me. I ground my head into the mattress and exploded. Coming with brass the second time always felt better, longer, sweeter, for some reason. I gurgled pure pleasure and rolled my eyes on black and red, sweating and clawing at his back, dying and coming back to life on his dick. And coming was the key word above all else. I came until it felt like my own soul left my body and then slammed back into these exhausted bones. Of course he wasn't done. It was never that easy. His rough hands tugged at me, rolling me around, setting me on my hands and knees. Right there, babe. Let's see how fucking hard this fancy bed shakes when my abs are slapping your ass. Oh, God. The thought made me horny all over again. He sank into me, holding me up by the leather shoulders. I couldn't see him behind me, but I knew his eyes were glued to the brand on the back. Property of brass, written in white on black. The light to all the darkness we'd fought through together. Fuck, he grunted, thrusting his cock deeper, finding a rougher tempo in his favorite position. It was quickly becoming mine, too. Something about the slap of his balls on my clit really set me off. Soon, the fireworks he wanted flew through my blood again, colorful starbursts becoming screaming meteors. We fucked hard and fast. The bed shook like it was the middle of a great earthquake, and my hair flopped all over the place. I hoped there'd be time for a shower later, to hide the sex hair from Jackie. Though my sis knew damned well what was going on almost every night since I'd gotten this jacket. I was his old lady, and I didn't hide it. I didn't dare dream of anything else besides screaming his name, loudly and gratefully, an echo for the whole world to absorb. The leather formed a sweet, sultry cocoon over my flesh. I roasted inside and out, sticky, but not even caring. The greatest heat was still a few more minutes away. Brass slowed his thrusts, just long enough to grab my hair and hold me up, reaching one hand past my naked waist. He pinched and rubbed my clit, vicious little strokes, timed to match his new rough thrusts. I want you to come with me, babe. I'm not gonna bust till I feel your pussy clenched around me. Come on. He quickened his strokes. Come with me. Let me feel your pulse, your slickness, your heartbeat. Let me feel your love. A fiery tingle started deep and slow. Strange, given how rough his friction rubbed inside me, rocking me from head to toe, kindling a slow-moving firestorm that jerked my hair with him. God, there was no stopping it when I finally exploded. My pussy clenched tight around his dick, and I barely stopped myself from collapsing on the bed. Brass's rough hands held me up, thrusting at light speed when he felt me start to spasm on his length. He jerked his cock as deep as he could go, and all his muscles swelled around me. Good girl. Very, very fucking good. It was the last thing he managed before his voice disappeared into the same orgasmic riptide, swallowing me whole. His cum burst inside me, molten, deep, filling. We rocked and came together, snarling out our pleasure, our eyes rolling in the starry void of our heat. While we were fused, everything we'd done together flashed before me, all our pain and joys, maybe even things yet to come. Shit, babe, he said when it was over, pulling out and rolling me onto his chest. I've never fucked a girl so hard she's seen a ghost. Sorry, I whispered, brushing my lips against his. I was just thinking how much I love you. He grinned. Missy, you can look as haunted as you want, long as you're thinking about me. Don't apologize. I'm not sorry for any of this, even the brutal shit, because it led me to right here. It led me to the thing that matters most, as long as I'm alive and breathing. It led me to the fucking best old lady a man could ever ask for. He thumped his chest, right over his heart, and I laughed. 
Before I knew it, his lips were heading for mine. We shared another kiss, sunny and warm as the clear Nevada sky. This concludes Outlaw's Kiss by Nicole Snow. Narrated by Tatiana Sokolov and Mason Lloyd. Copyright 2014 by Nicole Snow. This unabridged audiobook is published by arrangement with Nicole Snow and was produced in the year 2015 by Tantor Media Incorporated, a division of recorded books, which holds the copyright thereto. Please visit Tantor.com for more information on our growing library of unabridged audiobooks and to take advantage of special offers. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program.